It seems like you need to be solaced Telling from the scratch on your knee You fell and got hurt in the process And now you come crying to me I catered for these circumstances And hands carry needle and stitch in my pants Don't worry my dear There is nothing to fear Just a stitch and a sew Soon it's almost as new And the cop will adhere After all you have to Admit it is not as severe Right here. Take care of you, land up, Scott, my dear. I can't stand to watch children bleed. Well, don't give me that kind of look now. Just keep going on, soon you will. See how everything will end well though It still may depend on your skill I catered for these circumstances And hands carry needle and stitch in my pants But yet needle and thread can bear dangers instead If you're clumsy and plump and dull fingers and thumbs It might just turn out bad, especially when it comes To delicate operations like that I can't stand to watch children bleed I guess I should revise my statement The wound is not going to heal Forget about all that I said And work harder on your stitching skill I catered for these circumstances And hands carry needle and stitch in my pants Now you pay the bill for your lack of skill And please do stop crying and mourning and sighing Don't weep like a whelp that is painfully dying I merely was trying to help I can't stand to watch children bleed. Hello, dear friends of Adventure Games. The spyware we installed on your computers tells me that many children are sitting at their screens again tonight. That's why I'll refrain from telling you the story that I had actually prepared for you. Of course, that's a real shame. It would have been such a good story. Entertaining explosions, a giant robotic opossum. But also with many offensive expressions and an inordinate amount of excessive violence. The story that I'll tell you instead has a slightly different flavor. It's about Lily, the most virtuous child in the entire world. And it begins in the courtyard of a small sleepy convent school. Not too far from the place where the giant robotic opossum is sucking the brains of innocent bystanders out through their eye sockets. But enough of that. It's a beautiful, sunny day. And Lily is raking the leaves in the yard with a cheery tune on her lips. La, 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 la. 
Really? How many times do I have to tell you not to sing while working? You know very well that I hate the sound of cheerful children. These ch ch children are driving me crazy. There you are. Is that Moloch making you rip, 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 rake leaves again? Uh huh. Tuh, how boring. And so unnecessary, too. The leaves all drift back onto the path anyway. You should just come with me instead. I'm on a treasure hunt right now, you know? Uh uh. Well, it's your decision. You can always come to the swing tree later when you're done here. I think I found something in the flower beds over there. Until then, see ya. There are frequent reports of accidents caused by the mishandling of computer games. To minimize the risk of a crippling deformity, we recommend that you strictly comply with all of the following safety guidelines. Do you want to play the tutorial? You've decided to play the tutorial. That's very smart of you. And because you paid attention, you also know that with all these leaves here, the convent garden needs a good raking. Lily has already picked up the rake. Accordingly, the cursor now shows the picture of a rake. To discover the spots where Lily can rake, simply press the space bar. Why don't you just try it out right now? Would you look at that? The red eyes show which items can be used. Apparently, there are three piles of leaves that Lily can use with the rake. Just move the cursor over one of the piles until the name of the item appears next to it. You can now make the move with a left mouse click. But be careful, accidents can happen so quickly. Hi diggity! You've taken the first step without giving anyone a deep flesh wound. <laughs> but your work isn't done yet. Finish the task for Mother Superior. It can't be that hard, can it? Once again, you're not even fit to rake leaves. Ugh. It doesn't matter. I have two new tasks for you. The flower beds in the backyard have to be dug up again. Can you manage that? Uh-huh. I doubt it, but we'll see. And while you're in the backyard, the swing tree is infested by termites. Come up with something to get rid of them for good. So, one more time for the really clueless. First, dig up the flower beds. Second, get rid of the termites infesting swing tree. You'll be very sorry if you don't do a good job. Lily has finished raking. She's no longer holding the rake in her hand, but she still got it with her. If you would like to use it again, you can find it in Lily's inventory. Move the mouse cursor to the lower right edge of the screen to open the inventory. Be careful you don't get your finger caught. Amputations are such unhappy affairs. Good. Now, click on the rake symbol with the left mouse button to pick up the rake again. You can now use the rake with other objects at any time, even with other inventory items. When you're done, use the right mouse button to carefully put the rake back into the inventory. Now that Lily has been relieved of her first task, it's time to get familiar with the basic game mechanics. Press the left mouse button 
to send Lily wherever you want. Whenever Lily can leave a location, the cursor changes into an error. First, follow Edna in the backyard. The exit can be found at the right edge of the monitor. But be careful, that their error is sharp. When doing garden work, remember, stay alert. The cursor changes whenever Lily can interact with an object. Most objects can be examined. If so, an eye will appear on the right half of the cursor. Click with the right mouse button to execute this action. Why don't you try it on the compost barrel? The yard waste was rotting away leisurely in the composting bin. A paradise for maggots and spiders. Lily couldn't stop watching the fascinating activity in there. The swing tree was crawling with termites. Why did Mother Superior dislike these cute little animals so much? Hey, Lily, did you finally get out of doing your stupid raking chore? Uh-huh. Very good. And you finally got time to go treasure hunting with me? Uh-uh. What? Did you get even more chores to do? Uh-huh. That's so unfair. But maybe we can still find a way for you to help me. That would be cool. I'm sure you're dying to know how the treasure hunting's going, right? Uh-huh. Well, to be honest, not so great. The ground is just too hard. I doubt I'll be able to find anything here without a shovel. But I already have lots of cool dirt under my fingernails, and I even swallowed a slug by accident. A small consolation from Mother Nature. What do you have to do for Mother Superior now? Don't tell me you have to scrape off her warts with a pumice stone again. I'm still finding crumbs in our bunk from last time. Uh, wait, Lily. This is an especially hard spot. Oh, what a drag. This is ruining all my calluses. And it took me so long to nurture them. These flower beds could really use some digging. Uh-huh. Don't tell me that's exactly what Mother Superior ordered you to do. Uh-huh. But that's fabulous. And you'll be able to help me dig up the treasure after all. You don't even have a choice. You've been kind of told to by the Lord. All we still need is a shovel. Um, a shovel, Lily. We'll never dig up the treasure without a shovel. Um, uh... I don't know where we can find a shovel either. I'd imagine they're kept in the cellar. Now we just need to find a way to get down into the cellar. You can't walk through walls by any chance, can you? Uh-uh. We really have to teach you how to do that one of these days. But first, you should concentrate on the shovel. It has top priority. Uh? She told you to get rid of the termites on the swing tree, right? Uh-huh. <sighs> It was just a question of time. Does she even realize how hard it was to collect them all? I even broke into the firefighters museum to get the large red ones. And then all the trouble I went to teaching them tricks. They can already do a polonaise if you lay a trail of jelly. I wanted to teach them the cha-cha next. Ugh, what the hell. Maybe you can relocate them instead of blasting them out or whatever else it was you had planned. I'd even help you, but I've run out of jelly. Um, are you still worried about the termites? I'd really love to help you, but unfortunately, I don't have any more jelly to lure the little darlings someplace else. But when we found the treasure, we can buy ourselves a whole jelly factory, or even better, a honey farm. I think honey is much cooler than jelly anyway. It sticks to the bottoms of your shoes better, and if we had a honey farm, we could also train the bees. Maybe there's still a chance for my project, peepholes for the Great Wall of China, after all. <sighs> Mother Superior is having a bad day again, isn't she? Uh-huh. That wasn't hard to guess. The last good day she had was when everyone got mumps. I've rarely heard her laugh so hard. Don't let her annoy you too much, okay? Uh... Hmm? Oh, Lily. I thought somebody was there. Don't bug me. I'm busy. 
Uh... Didn't I tell you to leave me alone? I'm trying to concentrate, okay? Something is down there in the well. I can see something sparkling. Oh man, I hope it's the key to the cellar. That would be so gumbo. Um... Really, Lily, stop talking so much. Unless, of course, you have an idea how I can get the cellar key. Just think of all the things I could do with it. I hear that awesome stuff is stored down there. Not just junk like shovels and brushes and all that. I'm talking about real treasures. You can blab as much as you want. My complete attention is focused on the cellar key at the bottom of the well. I hear that awesome stuff is stored down there. <laughs> Let me guess. You don't know what gumbo is, right? Uh-uh. Oh, Lily, you're just hopelessly square. Guys as cool as me say, that's totally gumbo. Or, that gumbos. But you're... Just lame, totally ungumbo. Um, is this gonna be another one of your lectures about law and order at the convent? I'm so interested. Boy, what now? Can't you see I'm busy with the well? Or did your oh so great mother superior forbid that too? Uh huh. Oh, yeah? That just proves how absurd adult rules are. What? You're still here? Don't creep around like that. I almost fell in the well from fright. Huh? Oh, how cute. Are you worried about me now? Or what? Don't worry. I'm not stupid. I'm not gonna climb down into the well. But not because Mother Superior has forbidden it. Just because it really is too dangerous. Although... When Lily returned to the well, Freeman was gone. Lily! Help! Lily heard strange noises from the bottom of the well. But she was a good little girl, and she knew she wasn't supposed to play near the well. Just like Freeman. She had even told him so herself. Where could he be? Clumsy Lily had actually dropped the bee's nest into the well. The bees didn't like it too much either. Their buzzing sounded different than usual. Too bad. The faucet was dry. Lily was excited. Where could the hose lead to? What a surprise. The hose led to, uh... Too bad. The faucet was dry.
lost your mind? Turn that off immediately. But... Did I not tell you exactly what you should be doing? I just c c can't believe you keep finding new ways to disappoint me. Lily didn't understand what she had done wrong. Thanks a lot for your great help. You really did a fantastic job. If I can ever help you... Uh... Oh, you want the cellar key, but of course not. What in the world are you thinking? You're the one who got me to go into the well. It's your fault that I fell in. But instead of helping me get out, you throw a beehive on my head and nearly drown me. Look at me. I'm wet covered in bee stings, and smeared from head to toe with honey. I know everyone thinks you're sweet and harmless, but you're actually a walking disaster. You can definitely forget about the key. You keep away from me. Lily thought about collecting the honey with her bare hands, but then she remembered her recent scolding at the cafeteria. She needed a better plan. A shovel! That's exactly what Lily needed. But she'd never get to it from here. Lily knew that this device was called an air hammer, but she didn't know why anyone would want to hammer air. The compost bin was the ideal place to move the termites to. Lily started right away. So far, the plan had worked well. Maybe a little too well. The termites were now following Lily's spilled honey back into the courtyard. sounds were drifting towards her from over there. It was probably the termites celebrating their new home. Freeman had now left for good, but at least the termites had found a new home on the bench. And as if that weren't reason enough to be happy, they had been joined by one of those funny gnomes that Lily sometimes saw around. Mother Superior had strictly forbidden the children from playing in the cellar. On the other hand, Lily had a task to finish. A shovel! That's exactly what Lily needed. Yay! You found a shovel! Oh, Lily, you're the best! Let's not waste any time and dig up the treasure. And Edna and Lily began digging out what they thought was a treasure chest. 
That's quite a treasure chest. It looks like it might have belonged to some space pirates once. Mm -hmm. So what? They were space pirates from World War II. Who cares? What's more important is that they left us their treasure. Come on, let's open it. I'm so excited. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Once again, more proof that the bad reputation raw violence has is completely undeserved. Here, we certainly won't get far without it. What's that supposed to be? Those space pirates must have led a pretty miserable life if this was their most precious treasure. Well, at least we have a fabulous chest, and I already have an idea what we can do with it. We'll bury our own treasure. Do you have anything on you? Hmm. Uh -uh. Some wool from embroidery class? Wow, that's perfect! Our friendship ribbon, the string that ties us both together so to speak. Come on, put it in there. Now we just have to bury the chest again and... Lily! Where did the brat disappear to now? Lily! That's Mother Superior. What does she want now? We should check before she explodes. You have to be careful, you know? That took much too long for my liking. Is everyone finally here? Freeman is missing, Mother Superior. <laughs> Say nothing more! Your lack of discipline has reached a level that I can no longer tolerate. From now on, all games on the convent grounds are forbidden. And until further notice, there will be no more dessert, and bedtime will be moved up by an hour. And in case you're wondering, it is the bad behavior of one specific student that has led me to take these measures. In my helplessness, I even decided to call on an expert for help. He's a renowned psychologist who will restore discipline and order here in the convent. The examination will take place this evening. The doctor will drive the mischief out of you once and for all. And I can guarantee this much. It won't be a pleasant experience. A psychological examination? Oh, Lily. I'm sure this is all about me. I desperately need a plan. Meet me near the beds. I'll need your help. You have the rest of the day off to think about what you've done wrong. I'd better not hear that you've used the time to create more mischief and... Lily, I'm expecting you in my office. Now! I'm very disappointed in you, Lily. Can you ever do anything right? Oh, uh, Not another word. Your constant excuses just make me even angrier. And now just don't stand around like an idiot. Well, get a move on. Feed the cat. Can't you see how emaciated Lumpy has gotten again? Oh, stupid ch ch child! The cheerful flower seemed to like Lily. At least it bent forward just a touch when Lily came close. Stop dawdling. Feed the cat. What are you doing? Bad, Lily. Very, very bad. You should really know that Lumpy doesn't eat regular cat food. Um... <sighs> but you've disappointed me for the last time. Here's the recipe for the right cat food. Bring it to Doris, the lunch lady. It contains exact instructions for preparing Lumpy's food. Doris can also find my lunch order for today on there, too. Do you understand? Uh-huh. And now, get out. I have to prepare for Dr. Marcel's arrival. I'm hoping that his new method of correcting character flaws will save me this kind of trouble in the future. Lily felt miserable. Maybe Mother Superior was right, and this character correction would make everything better. The thought made Lily shudder. 
She had heard stories about Dr. Marcel. Dreadful stories. She should tell Edna the news. Dr. Marcel, you say? This confirms my worst suspicions. The doctor and I still have an old score to settle. I'm sure he's coming because of me. <sighs> Lily, I can't stay here any longer. I'm going to leave the convent and go into hiding for a while. There's just one catch. That guy, Garrett, who's constantly lurking around, I think he's spying on us for Mother Superior. So long as he keeps poking his nose into everything, I can't move freely. Do you think you can find a way to keep him off me for a while? Uh-huh. Oh, Lily. You're such a gem. What would I do without you? And? Are you making progress? Lily didn't know what to do with all these brand new marbles. Up until then, she had always played marbles with severed doll's heads. At least they had talked to her while she played. gawking at my hairdo. Don't tell me you've got your eye on my original Marushu Naoki hairpin. Can you believe it, Shy? Don't believe. Just know. The warriors of light see with the power of love. Just who does she think she is? Hiroyoshi Superfrog's arch enemy Soki Nuroshi Maya Yoki Hagatsu? Down with the dark forces! Trust in the elf magic of the glitter dust. Exactly. Everyone knows that a real Shibuya girl will only part with her hairpin if it's a real emergency, and only if facing death. Muroshi Sparkle, mystical spirit of the wolf. Mystical spirit of the wolf. Kamanukri, shing. And anyway, what even makes you think we'll let you have any of our personal things? You haven't launched any radical paramilitary campaigns or done anything to help destroy the state. We can't let the dark forces win. Plus, you've never helped us destroy the school. Does being warriors of the light really mean we have to destroy the school? It seems a little too hardcore to me. But Riot Girl does it too! On page 31 in volume 453, she puts one of Naga Yuzu's detonators in the teacher's lounge when the dark forces kidnap Musushi Rainbow. Shibuya is cool! Miyarushi Sparkle! Uh-huh. Garrett was already there. Lily watched how her slippery fellow student disappeared into the chapel. After him! <sighs> Who do we have here, then? Creepy Lily! How did it go with Mother Superior? Leave her alone, Shawnee. Only if she admits that all this trouble is her fault. We're, 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 we're not getting any d dessert? That's right, Memphis. And we can't play outside anymore, either. Is it asking too much to want to know why? Stop picking on her. You don't really think that Lily, of all people, has done something wrong, do you? She's just not cool enough for that. Exactly. She's such a good girl. She rakes, she cleans, she cooks. It's disgusting and dangerous because somehow it always ends in a disaster. Isn't that right, Lily? Ever since you came to the convent, it's been one strange accident after another. I uh, hardly dare get out of bed anymore. But none of this is your fault, is it? After all, you only do what you're told. I'm sure you're even running an errand for Mother Superior right now. Let's see what you've got there. Shawnee. Aha! I knew it! A recipe from Mother Superior. Well, I think I'll hold on to it for now. 
Let's see how Mother Superior likes having to wait for her food. And this time, our sweet Lily can face the music all by herself. <laughs> Let's go, guys. We're off. You're impossible. What's this? Where had Garrett gone? The chapel didn't have a second exit. Lily spent a lot of time in the confession booth. Only she knew what she mumbled during those long hours. At least ever since the father who took her confessions had died of a heart attack. The carving showed a begging monk with conspicuously empty hands. But something was missing. Dignity, for example, but something else too. Please stay off the slabs, okay? You're interfering with my research. The cross looked very unstable. Lily thought it would make much more sense to simply place it upside down. Frank was completely occupied with the stone slabs. Huh. Wait, wait, wait. No, nothing. I thought I detected a resonance echo in the floor. And where there's a resonance echo in a floor, the hollow space can't be far. A crypt or a hidden pool salon for Templars with outrageously hip hairstyles. What? Your question is completely justified. What would Templars be doing in a pool salon? It's just one of the countless mysteries surrounding the Templars. Where did they come from? Where did they go? Did they get a group discount ticket for their journey? And who was their hairstylist? There is just one answer to all these questions. The Great Church Conspiracy. And we can be certain that the evidence is buried beneath these stone slabs. If only I had the right tool to dig it up. Um, find it. Uh... Shh! You're destroying the holy illuminescence of the stone slabs. And if they lose their illuminescence, they certainly won't be in the mood to reveal their secret anymore. And there's no doubt that they have a secret. I know Templar symbols when I see them. Where there are Templars, a secret crypt with details on church conspiracies can't be far. If only I had the right tool to drill them out. Then all I'd need to know is which slab to drill under to get my hands on the church conspiracy. If it's one that has a neck, because there are those with a neck and those without. Lily was impressed. Everything Frank said made sense. Uh. Shh for a second. Oh, great. If there's just been a landslide in the Templar's subterranean crypt, then now I've missed it. How the hell are you supposed to uncover church conspiracies if you keep getting interrupted? Just the constant stream of people going to confession is getting on my nerves. But compared to you, they're as quiet as church mice. I have no idea who they are. They creep into the confession booth and only come out when it gets too noisy for them. All that will be over with as soon as I have the right tool for my excavation anyway. Ah, very good. That's exactly what I need. Now, if I only knew where to drill. But such knowledge was probably lost long ago. No one is old enough to still remember the age of the Templars. Otherwise, I'm sure I'd have long since had that church conspiracy by the scruff of its neck. Oh well, I'll just start. Damn, how am I supposed to work with all this noise? Hey, Frank, Frank! Ah, oh, what the hell? A surveillance room. 
That was the hard evidence that Garrett was spying for Mother Superior. Progress? Uh, cool. So you've been working on your imitating animal voices number. You can tell me about it later, okay? <sighs> First, we have to get rid of Garrett. I'm sure he's spying for Mother Superior. Um, uh, Before you say anything, I thought of something else. I think Garrett has a secret hiding place in the chapel. Uh, yeah, uh, a kind of listening station in the confession booth. This should prove once and for all that he's spying for Mother Superior. The question is whether we can somehow use this knowledge against him. Uh-huh. Lily actually had an idea. She would lock Garrett in his secret room. She could hardly wait to tell her best friend all about it. Wait, I know. What if we locked Garrett in his secret surveillance room? Just pretend you want to give confession, and when he's in his hiding place, wham! Our trap will snap shut on him. <sighs> Oh, don't be sad, Lily. I'm sure you'll come up with a good idea next time. But for now, let's get to work. It was my plan, so now you have to set it in motion. Um. Hmm. Wait a minute. What's that? Do you hear those noises too? <sighs> I think someone's drilling inside the chapel. <sighs> it's probably just Frank looking for evidence of a church conspiracy again. Dang! That could ruin our plans. If Garrett can't listen in on you, we won't be able to lock him in his hiding place. You have to think of something to get rid of Frank. Did you happen to find the plans for my time machine? Uh-uh. Eh, they weren't finished yet anyway. Hmm. How big is the microwave oven in the school cafeteria? Um... Ah, forget it. That won't work. And all my other ideas are a little complicated. We don't have time for them. I guess the easiest thing to do would be to help him with his search. Once Frank has found what he's looking for, he'll hopefully stop drilling. Lily had always liked the large painting in the main hall. It showed a dining table after a big meal, with a man in the center who had found the last cookie. Lily giggled at the thought that he would eat it all by himself, no matter how much the others begged. It was hopeless. Edna's balloon was hanging out of reach. The school clock was out of reach. Firecrackers. How did they ever get up there? Um... Lily, nice to see you. I hope Shawnee didn't upset you too much. He's an idiot. I think you're great, just as you are. Lily's heart skipped a beat. This might have been the nicest thing anyone ever said to her. Lily had asked for a musket last Christmas. Instead, she'd been given a muskrat nibbling on gingerbread. Hey, don't touch it. That's my old Boy Scout equipment. I might be old, but I can... I can tell you stories that'll make your ears ring. Some of them are about my old Boy Scout equipment, but... Only certified Boy Scouts are allowed to touch it. So get your hands... hands... <laughs> there were three empty pedestals on the shelf. That could mean something, or nothing at all. 
Oh, it wasn't the skeleton from biology class after all. It was just the old man again from history class. A visitor? What a rare, rare, rare animal. The hawk. But I don't mean the remake. I mean the original with, with extra ketchup, please. Uh. Uh, how rude of me. I forgot to tell you, um, to tell you how it used to be when the pyramids were built. I was the chief flogger on the north side. Yes, yes, in my life I've unified. Unified Tibet, I said. Back then I served as a carpet beater under three different Dalai Lamas. For one of them, I was even there as a rebirth assistant in the maternity ward. It was very different from the year I was an interior decorator for the Mayas. Build a mythical sliding puzzle here, hide a few artifacts in dark alcoves over there. Oh yes, I was building secret crypts when you were still in... in... in the indie band Inquisition Overload. But it flopped, unfortunately. The time wasn't right for that kind of music. Plus, our drummer had the plague. Uh, I got old. So old that all I'm good for now is as an exhibition piece for history, class. Clow. Uh. I'll get to that in a moment. First, I wanted to tell you... Telling stories takes a lot of skill. That's why I worked for a while as an exhibition piece for history class in a convent school. I just had to tell stories about my adventures once a week. For example, how I used to excavate secret crypts with the Templars below the school chapel. Or about my time as a lighting assistant for the moon landing. Uh. Hmm? W what? Oh, oh, I must have dropped off for a moment. But I was just going to tell you an exciting story from my past. Was it the story of how I tried to navigate to Cape Town and ended up discovering the Eurasian continent? Uh-uh. Oh, I know. I wanted to tell you how I helped the Templar Knights build the convent chapel, right? Uh-huh. I was particularly happy because I had eaten a banana. Or was I sad because all there was to eat was coconuts again? No, the coconuts were when the Trojan mayor gave me the key to the city for my heroic valor. Or was my heroic valor while building dikes in Atlantis? But I think I had an apple that day. Wasn't I a little more sleepy in Atlantis? And angry while building the chapel? Oh, what puppycock. I'm getting everything mixed up. Fortunately, I created a memory aid just for this anecdote, so that I'd remember the location of the secret crypts below the convent chapel. Uh-oh. Someone tidied up the shelf. That's where the objects for my three E's should be. Emotion, engagement, and eating. Now I can't, um, oh, can't make a fool of myself. Now let's see. Uh. No, no, no fear. I haven't forgotten your earlier question. On the contrary, 
I'm known for remembering everything all the time. This is thanks to a little trick I learned from an old Chinese mason long ago. All I need is a memory aid, like objects that remind me of the three E's. The first E stands for emotion. It tells me whether I was sad, happy, or angry in that situation. The second E stands for engagement. It reminds me of whether I overcame the situation with strength, heroic courage, or sleepiness. The third E stands for eating. To remember, I have to know which fruit I ate that day. Vitamins are good for the... Uh, for the... Um, Each mask had two tiny holes for screws. Not even Lily's fingers could fit in there. Mother Superior had forbidden Lily from eating the deadly nightshade berries, but no one had said anything about taking them. The chandelier's chain was attached by just one screw. Shibuya power! Riot girl rules! Shing! Shing! Um... Myoroshi sparkle! Myoroshi sparkle! Uh, she doesn't look any happier than before. By the spring of Gugu Oshima, Riot Girl rules! Shing! Shing! Hmm. Still no effect. I bet it's the fault of those school bullies. We hate them! Exactly. They are just as bad as the authorities. Or the dark forces. Or the financial system. Down with the dark forces! Let them all perish in an endless inferno! Oh. Shibuya power! Shibuya power! She girl, you're so clueless about trends. Just look at how you dress. Don't you know that Shibuya and only Shibuya is hot right now? Where's your glitter? Where are your Japanese accessories? Miyoroshi sparkle! Miyoroshi sparkle! Shing! Shing! Uh, huh? Oh man, you're really out of it, Lily. I already told you, you're not getting my hairpin. Only a true warrior of the light is worthy of it. Powers of the light, call upon the moon spirits. And until you start helping us fight the dark forces with a cool paramilitary campaign, don't even think of asking for our help. Miyoroshi sparkle! Miyoroshi sparkle! Uh, Just look at her face. Typical. We're probably too extreme for her, and we are. Just like Riot Girl. Riot Girl rules. Shing! Shing! Don't you dare tell me you've never seen a Riot Girl anime or read a Riot Girl manga. Right. Ugh. That's what I thought. Because the Riot Girl is totally shiny. Down with the dark forces. And Riot Girl is totally fighting against society more than anything. That's why we're also totally fighting against society. Because Riot Girl is Totally cool. That's why we have to destroy society. You can help us if you want. Down with the dark forces!
What have you got now? I hope it's a weapon for the battle against... <coughs> but that's a real detonator! And it's live! You have to defuse it, Suka! Hurry! But with what? With the power of love! What? Are you... Wait! I know! Phew, that was close. We'll snitch to Mother Superior. Exactly. This time you really went too far, Lily. What on earth are you thinking? You're even crazier than I thought. Totally un-gumbo. Don't just stand there. Get that bomb away from us. Take it somewhere where it can't do any damage. A bomb-proof place, a fireproof drum, or something like that? This is the last safe place in the entire convent, and I want it to stay that way. La, 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 la. The end of the world is near. Um. Now get lost before someone discovers me. If you're looking for your recipe, talk to Shorty. He pocketed it. But... Someone might hear you, and then they'll take away my hiding place. And if they take away my hiding place, then I'll definitely be next. The stove is the safest place in the entire convent. You know, it has a Krupp steel casing, titanium reinforced interior walls, and is lead coated inside. I'd even survive a bomb attack in here. Uh. Don't even try talking me out of it. I'm staying here. It's much too dangerous out there. Lily had no idea what Memphis was talking about, but he'd always been jumpy. It was the perfect place to get rid of the detonator. What's that? Well, what do you have there? Lily could finally use the hairpin. Does it have to blink like that? Lily closed the door again to keep Memphis's hiding place safe. Um, Lily? Lily? Something seemed to be wrong with Lily's ears today. She kept hearing all these sounds. The stove was black and empty, just like the mirror that always appeared in Lily's dreams. Perfect. The hairpin fit exactly into the holes. What are you creeping around here for? Feed the cat! Don't tell me you're done already! Uh... No. That's what I thought. I am slowly losing the will to keep constantly having to remind you ch ch children of what good values are. Take a look at the embroideries on the wall. They depict all of the important virtues. Superiority, strength, and self-control. Um... I'm quite aware that self-control is missing. Do you think I'm blind? <sighs> <sighs> now leave. 
I have to drink a calming tea. If you pass the classroom, remind Birgit to hurry up with your embroidering. If the self-control motif isn't finished today, I will really blow my top. Um, don't even bother trying to distract me, Lily. Unlike you, I actually have a sense of duty. You don't get to be Mother Superior's favorite by just standing around like a moron all day. Like you. I work hard to get all those honors and rewards. The only thing I'm missing on my path to perfection is the Golden Girl Scout's badge on a ribbon. That's why I'm working overtime to perfect my embroidering skills. Mother Superior loves the embroidery because the pictures of animals convey important values. But you wouldn't know anything about that. You've always been terrible at embroidering and everything else for that matter. Oh, take your little boo-boos to Mother Superior. I'm not her deputy yet. But maybe that'll change once I've collected all my awards. <laughs> I'm already her favorite. Um, in case you're wondering what I'm doing here, it's called embroidering. Uh, I know it's not your area of specialty. Otherwise, I doubt Mother Superior would have banned you from taking it. What a shame. I know how much you've always enjoyed embroidering. Lily had to admit that Birgit was right. Her productive friend was really much more talented. But that was certainly no reason for Lily to wish an incurable disease on her. Neither a disease with an oozing rash, nor a disease that causes her to cough her lungs out. Be quiet now. I just had a great idea for what I could put on the missing cafeteria banner. Damn, it's gone. Thanks a lot. Great job, Lily. If you want help, Ask Mother Superior about a suitable animal role model. I'm already done with all my patterns. And remember, at this time of day, Mother Superior is always in the cafeteria drinking a soothing tea. So don't wander into her office. We're not supposed to go in there alone. And hurry up. My grades depend on it. <sighs> Stop bothering me. If you carry on like this, I'll never get my last award. The Golden Girl Scout's badge on a ribbon. Oh, yes. Uh, why don't you get to the point already? You seem to be lacking a few important lessons in values and standards. Haven't you learned anything at all from my multi-award winning embroidery? Each animal has an assigned character trait. Bears represent strength, and deer stand for heroic valor. There are negative role models, too, of course. The porcupine, for example, is especially slow and sleepy. That's why you'll never find one on one of my banners. But maybe it's in your family's coat of arms. Um, what was that? <sighs> you impertinent little slug! I can't stand it when people gossip about me behind my back! The youth of today is becoming ever more insolent! No wonder, with all the violence and foul language in the media! If I could, I'd twist your heads off one by one! Uh, where are my canning jars? I need something to calm my fingers! Otherwise something terrible might happen here! Um... Ah! Now I understand! You came to complain about the food, right? Well, then I have bad news for you! Children only get food from canning jars! And that's that! My hands are trained to twist the lids off! I haven't been wringing the necks of caged chickens for 20 years for nothing! Plus, I've got a court order that says I gotta open 10 jars a day! You can thank my idiotic lawyer for that! <sighs> Anything else? Do I have to explain it to you with puppets? 
Meal time ended long ago! The only thing that I'm still cooking today is food for Mother Superior's cat! And the food for Mother Superior herself! Or I should say I would. But my knife disappeared. And on top of that, the stove in the cellar has gone out. So I couldn't cook anything anyway. However, the most important thing is that Mother Superior still wanted to send a recipe to me. You don't happen to have it on you, do you? Huh? Don't bother! I won't be able to cook without my knife anyway! Ugh, when I get my hands on the child that stole my knife, they'll be amazed with all the things a knife can do. Ugh, forget the recipe. As long as the stove in the cellar is out, I won't be cooking anything anyway. I've had it up to here! Haven't I told you a thousand times already? Get the hell out! Just wait! Can I have that? I need something to calm my fingers! Thanks! That was close! Now take your stuff and get out! A note was pinned on the receipt holder. Dear, crossed out, Ms. Zimmelback, I have to say I'm very surprised by the way you fulfilled my request to send me a pet for my student's classroom. I had a real animal in mind, one that conveyed important values, like a puma or a boa constrictor. But the guinea pig you sent is useless to me. I've pickled it in alcohol to save it for the dissection class in biology. Send me a proper animal immediately, or you will not have heard the l l last of me. Regardless, Mother Superior Ignorance. Lily thought this idea was delightful. The guinea pig was bound to make a huge impression as an animal role model. At least this is a regular animal motif. But do you think it also conveys really important values? Of course it did. Guinea pigs were cute and small, but always cheerful. Lily always tried to follow their example. Uh-huh. Hmm. Well, if you say so. Come back in a few minutes. If you don't bother me, I won't take long. Birgit has finally finished the new banner, but what's that? A small, 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 d -d dirty guinea pig? Birgit didn't really make this, did she? Uh huh. That ca ca can't be true. Can I not rely on anyone here? Just you wait. She'll get what's coming to her.
I can't even tell you how disappointed I am in you, Birgit. This is the worst job I've seen in my entire career. But... Don't talk back. You are bad. I will probably have to strip you of all your awards, prizes, and Girl Scout badges. You no longer deserve any of them. But I only did what? Hogwash. Do you really wish to contradict me? I can't believe how low you've sunk, Birgit. A guinea pig? It's unbelievable! Your work is an insult to the entire convent. Get rid of it! I'm sorry. I, uh, I didn't mean to. <sighs> your whining won't make up for your failures. Just in case you decide not to waste my time with your ineptitude anymore. Here is a motif that's worth immortalizing on a banner. The Puma. Strong, precise, dignified. A symbol of self-c-c-control. The embroidery was of a unicorn with eight legs. Lily loved the unusual embroidery more than anything. But she didn't know who had made it. When asked about it, Mother Superior was even more vexed than usual. It was the old man's memory aid. If Lily wanted him to help her, she had to find the right objects. An emotion, an engagement, and something to eat. Oh, it wasn't the skeleton from biology class after all. It was just the old man again, from history class. Hmm? W what Do we know each other? Uh-huh. Uh. What's the matter, sweetheart? Did you forget your question? Here's a small tip. Just try to remember the three E's. The first E stands for emotion. It tells me whether I was sad, happy, or angry in that situation. The second E stands for engagement. It reminds me of whether I overcame the situation with strength, heroic courage, or sleepiness. The third E stands for eating. To remember, I have to know which fruit I ate that day. Uh. Ah, I know exactly what you're looking for. An instructive story about my time with the Templar Knights. Unfortunately, my memory aid is still missing a few important pieces. If I only knew what the three E's for this story were. But right now, all I can remember are a few vague associations. Four, to be precise. As everyone knows, each different food creates exactly one emotion and promotes one characteristic. For example, I was never sad if I'd packed a few apples, because they always helped me be very strong. I could only do heroic deeds on days when I wasn't sad. On the other hand, if I was angry, I could never show great strength. Coconuts were always good at preventing sleepiness. Hmm? On this one specific day when I was helping the Templars, I was neither happy about an apple, nor angry about a banana. But I also wasn't sad about a banana. 
or happy about a coconut.
Hmm? W what Do we know each other? Uh-huh. Uh... Oh, wait. Wasn't I just about to tell you something? Fortunately, I created a memory aid just for this anecdote. Ah, exactly. Now I remember. On that day, I was particularly... Angry, we had just laid the stone slabs in the chapel when the Templar Knights returned from a secret meeting. They examined my work and praised me for doing a heroic job. Then they gave me a coconut. It was one of the greatest days of my life. Here, I even still have the book in which I wrote everything down including the meaning of the secret Templar symbols on the stone slabs. And now please leave me alone. All this reminds me too much of how I once helped a little girl uncover the mystery of the secret crypt below the chapel. One day I really have to tell you that story. <coughs> The book contained the recorded memories of the elders. Most of it was faded. Only the chapter on the construction of the convent chapel was still legible. That would certainly interest Frank. What's the matter now? My goodness, that does look very interesting. Uh-huh. Let's see. Hmm. At least those are the same symbols as on the stone slabs. But the pattern is full of gaps. I'm a pro when it comes to riddles. That's why all I need is a single glance to be able to declare without a doubt that, yes, this is a riddle. But the solutions page seems to be missing. This book is useless to me like that. Unless, of course, you have the solution. Yes! Yes! That has to be it! I have solved the mystery! Thanks for holding the book all this time. You're blocking the way. May I? As soon as Frank stopped drilling, Lily was finally able to draw Garrett out of his shell. Lily crouched inside the confession booth and waited. All was quiet in the chapel, except for Frank, who could barely contain his excitement. Wow, if these bones aren't evidence of a church conspiracy, I'll eat Tom Hanks' double chin. And what's that? Hey, this just keeps going. Let me just drill through this stone slab and... What's that? A sword! A real Templar sword? It's incredible! Man, it sure is wedged in tightly, I hope. That isn't a load-bearing strut beam. The impact echoed through the entire church. Lily was tempted to look, but then she heard approaching steps. Ah, it's so blissfully quiet. I can finally take up my listening post again.
Lily had to confess that she was once again completely lost. Lily had to confess that she was once again completely lost. I'd like to be able to say that Lily had a plan, that she was thinking about locking Garrett into the confession booth by welding a bar in front of the secret door. But Lily was just thinking about ponies. What's going on? Is that you, Lily? Do you think that's funny? Let me out! Now! Lily felt uncomfortable about it. Locking someone into a confession booth was probably not appropriate for a well-behaved girl. On the other hand, she was doing Edna a big favor. She could hardly wait to tell her best friend all about it. So, Garrett is out of the picture. Very good. But I'm still in danger. Before I can leave the convent, you have to help me cover my tracks. The doctor can't find out that I was ever here. Could you do that for me? Uh-huh. Great. Let's see. First, you have to get rid of the balloon that I left in the main hall. It even has my portrait on it. The doctor would recognize me immediately. I also played with firecrackers down by the school clock. Let's just say it was part of a weather experiment. And I would have succeeded if I'd had a real DeLorean. You can't imagine how hard it is to get a lawnmower up to 80 miles per hour. And of course, you have to remove the inscription on the swing tree. It hurts me just as much as you. But I could hardly leave the doctor better evidence that I was here than that. Do you think you can handle all that? Uh-huh. Thank you, Lily. You're the best. You... No. Oh, another one of them. Get lost. I'm not in the mood for jokes today. Um... You're probably wondering what I'm doing here, right? My name is Ernest. Funny Ernest. <laughs> and I applied as a child therapist here. But no, Mother Superior had already found someone else. That Dr. Marcel. A nuthouse shrink. Can you believe it? I wouldn't let that guy anywhere near my kids, even if I knew where they were. <sighs> That's what I get for retraining as a psychologist. Laughter is the best therapy. Great idea. I've been waiting for a gig for months. I should have stayed a plumber. <laughs> what? You don't like the mood I'm in? You want me to show you a few tricks now or what? I feel terrible. Because my therapy concept flopped. Laughter is the best therapy. Great idea. How oh, rotten. Um... What? No. Oh. You want to see a few tricks, don't you? I knew I shouldn't have said that. Okay. I'll make you a deal. I'll make you a cute balloon animal, and you leave me in peace, okay? Uh-huh. All right? What's it gonna be? A wrench? Why not? I know all about wrenches. Just don't ask me about Dr. Marcel. I wouldn't let that guy anywhere near my kids, even if I knew where they were. He's a bitter, evil man. He's known everywhere for hating children. Ever since a little girl shoved him down the stairs. Huh, <laughs> serves him right, that old twit. What Lily now did was actually void of all 
all logic. And she could already hear uproar of the online reviewer. But she did it anyway. The online reviewers sounded a bit hoarse today. Maybe they shouldn't smoke so much. Done. Now only two pieces of evidence were left to completely erase Edna's tracks. The clown had just left his cigarettes here. He must have been in a great hurry. Psst. Lily, I really have to ask you something. Do you like me? Uh huh. Thank goodness. I wasn't really sure, because there's something on my mind. It's... it's about my feelings, and I'd like to ask you a really huge favor. Would you do something for me? Uh huh. Really? Wow, I'm so excited. Okay. Calm down, Capu. So, would you give this letter to Shai? Uh-huh. <sighs> I really have to meet her. So, could you just give her the letter? Man, that's so cool of you. You're really the best, Lily. thing do you have there? Is it for me by any chance? Lily hesitated. Certainly not because she begrudged Shy her meeting with Kapu. No. She was worried. Who knew what sort of things could be in the envelope? A snake? A scorpion? The anthrax virus? In the end, she decided to give Shy the letter, after all. Uh-huh. Wow! It's from Kapu! A date? Oh, how exciting! I have to put on more glitter. Apparently, the letter didn't contain the anthrax virus. Thank goodness. The sword was almost long enough to reach the firecrackers. But only almost. Lily needed some kind of extendable arm. The sword may not have reached the firecrackers or the rope, but it fit perfectly into the mesh of the clock hands. So perfectly that it got stuck in there. Now what was Lily to do? Wait until the gargoyle dropped down of its own accord? She didn't have that much time. The clock in the tower sounded duller than usual today. Was it really that late already? Done. Now only one piece of evidence was left to completely erase Edna's tracks. Apparently, Birgit had set down her work, but she had completed the banner with the Puma motif. Too bad that Lily couldn't congratulate her on the good job she'd done anymore. That's what I call an outstanding motif. Effective and controlled. A symbol of complete self-control. Just like the directors of this convent, this will impress the doctor. Come along, Lily. Birgit has earned another award. Her diligence and reliability will be rewarded with a celebration.
Lily almost jumped in the air with excitement. There hadn't been a celebration in the convent for a very long time. Mother Superior had already begun the ceremony when Lily entered the classroom. It was a lovely celebration. The only odd thing was that Birgit was nowhere to be seen. And I hereby award you a Golden Girl Scouts badge on a ribbon. Your embroidering skills and excellent sense of duty are a superb example to your fellow students. You, Birgit, are a textbook example of how strict and systematic g -g 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 guidance can result in great achievements. Ah, Lily, follow the example of your fellow student and do some cleaning. If only all ch ch children were as conscientious as Birgit. The celebration was very short, but Lily enjoyed it anyway. This was probably the best day of her life. Lily thought that the Girl Scouts badge was much too precious to leave lying about like that. She put it in her pocket just to be safe. The cake was meant for Birgit and no one else. Lily didn't even deserve to lick the pastry shell. The cake was meant for Birgit and no one else. Lily didn't even deserve to lick the pastry shell. Hey, don't touch it. That's my old Boy Scout equipment. Only certified Boy Scouts are allowed to touch it. But that's... That's the Golden Girl Scouts badge on a ribbon. I had no idea I was talking to a genuine scout. I was a boy scout once, you know. Ha! Well, knock me over with a... With a... With my things over there. They're lying in that chest, you know. Because among scouts, there's no such thing as ownership and... And... You again! You shouldn't be wandering the cafeteria between mealtimes! The strangest accidents have happened then! And I have an alibi for nearly all of them! You uh -huh. shouldn't- Uh-uh. Should I show you? Uh-uh. You see? So hand it over before you hurt someone! Unbelievable! A little girl with a knife! So irresponsible! Here, take this chainsaw instead! Now that I have my knife back, I won't need it anymore! Suka didn't seem to notice Lily. Lily didn't hold it against her. She didn't need Suka's attention. So why should she long for Suka to fall off the swing and break all her bones? There was no reason at all to have thoughts such as these. The idea was good, but unfortunately there wasn't any gasoline for the chainsaw.
Lily had a brilliant idea. High proof alcohol was an excellent fuel substitute for the gasoline chainsaw. Mother Superior would really be proud of her. Done. Lily had finished all of Edna's jobs and had gotten rid of all of the evidence. She could hardly wait to tell her best friend all about it. Lily, thank God. I have a new and much more serious problem. I can't find my diary anywhere. And all my escape plans are written in it. I even drew a map where I marked my hiding place. So forget about getting rid of the evidence. Um... No, no, just forget it. Hmm. It wasn't important anyway. The diary now has top priority. Please, help me look for it. If Mother Superior gets her hands on it, I'm done for. It has to be somewhere around here. Of course, Lily immediately knew what to do. <clears throat> she immediately knew what to do. Oh, man. Was that really so hard? The diary was lying right there. Or hanging, rather. The telltale drawings were dangling from the claw of a dumb, gawking pigeon. The moment Lily tried to grab the diary, the pigeon rose in the air and carried it to the roof of the convent, where it disappeared in the rafters above Mother Superior's office. Gawking certainly wasn't going to help. Once again, Lily's path led her back towards the lion's den. Finally! There you are! Lumpy starving! Did you get the cat food? Uh-uh. What? And then you dare return here? Off with you! Out! 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 Oh! How I loathe these ch ch children! Um... Look who's coming to get her recipe back. If it isn't our little goody two-shoes Lily, you better split before I tie your shoelaces together. Or worse. <laughs> oh, you really want the recipe back, don't you? Uh-huh. Well, I didn't know that. Just give me a sec so I can wrap it up for you with a bow. Hey! Lily was touched. It was so rare for her to get presents. <laughs> you so don't have a clue, do you? Get lost, Lily, or I'll be forced to call you names. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm a real badass. Just face it, you're not tough enough to make any demands around here. Uh. Tell me. How come you even dare to come here anyway? You know we're not allowed to play in the garden anymore. Or did Mother Superior send you? You can tell your beloved Mother Superior that I don't give a damn about her stupid rules. Ha! But I bet you're too scared. You're scared of your Echo, right? And you should be. Because one day, when you least expect it, who knows? You might turn around and see that someone has stolen your milk. <laughs> well, well, well. What's this? Is this you standing up for yourself? <laughs> Just look at you, Lily, with your bow and your braids. You don't actually think you could stand up to a bad boy like me. Do you? I was playing with matches before you said your first morning prayer. How could I ever take someone like you seriously? Do you know how to spit cherry pits or hunt sparrows with a slingshot? Just face it, you'll never be as tough as me. And that means you won't get your recipe either. Huh. 
Hooray! The marbles were the perfect ammunition for the musket. Lily might have missed the sparrows, but her effect on Shawnee was apparent. He actually seemed a little impressed. Shawnee seemed very anxious. Lily preferred not to talk to him in this state. She didn't want to risk him pulling out her braids, but she also needed the recipe. What could she do to get a nasty boy like Shawnee to calm down? Lily had heard that cigarettes were supposed to have a soothing effect. Hooray! What a great job Lily had done. Shawnee seemed to feel much better already. You can tell by the way his pupils were slowly rotating towards the inside. You again! You shouldn't be wandering the cafeteria between mealtimes! The strangest accidents have happened then! And I have an alibi for nearly all of them! Um... You're starting to get on my nerves, child! Mealtime ended long ago! And as long as the stove is out and I don't have my knife, the kitchen is staying closed! So there's nothing for you here! Unless you have Mother Superior's recipe. Oh, you have the recipe? Uh-huh. Well then, let me see it! I can manage that. Duck roast for Lumpy. Good choice. All I need is the canned food for Mother Superior's meal from the cellar. But I can't start cooking again anyway. As long as the stove isn't working, Mother Superior will have to wait for the cat food. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in your shoes when you give her the news. This had to be the canned food Doris was talking about. Lily selected pigeon flavor. Lily had placed the log in the stove. Now she just had to light it. You again? You shouldn't be wandering the cafeteria between mealtimes. The strangest accidents have happened then. And I have an alibi for nearly all of them. Uh -huh. You! The strangest accidents have happened then. But I won't be able to fit anything else in there. I can't send Mother Superior's food up until you put the empty plate back in the dumbwaiter. Got it? Uh-huh. Yeah, let's just hope so. There's the missing child. I was beginning to hope you'd been eaten by a wild animal on the way. But at least you brought the food. I have to finish a few tasks now. Feed Lumpy while I'm gone. And don't even think about leaving the office before the work is done. How 
disappointing. It seemed Lumpy didn't feel like eating roast at all. How would Lily ever finish her task now? Cat food with pigeon flavoring. The cafeteria never served anything this delicious. Lumpy obviously enjoyed the pigeon flavored cat food. And it really looked like he already had an idea where to get second. Too bad the wall was too smooth for his claws. Either there was a picture missing here, or there was one too many hooks. Lily liked static electricity. It reminded her of the feelings she got when she thought of her parents. Lily kept the idea at the back of her mind. Lily could just forget about that idea. Someone was in a rush. Oh, that's what Lumpy had smelled. The pigeon that had stolen Edna's diary was sitting on one of the beams. It was a tricky plan, but Lily was running out of options. My goodness! I see that Lumpy has finally had a meal. Why, this is quite a surprise. Perhaps all hope is not lost for you yet after all. And now leave me alone. Ah, uh, maybe I was too strict with the girl and her fellow students. They're only ch children after all. Was I too hasty, Lord? Should I stop Dr. Marcel from coming before he tries his new method on the children? Please, give me a sign. What's that? A dove? Or at least a pigeon of peace? Is this your sign? Should I spare the children? Oh, Lord. Thank you. I... What? That... Ch... 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 Those damn... Ch... Ch... Children! That's it! I finally reached my limit! Lily! When Lily walked into the sleeping quarters, Edna was gone. All she found was a hastily scribbled letter on her bed. Take care, Lily Fred. I have to go. This situation is getting too hot for me to stay. I'll wait for you at the swing tree for a bit. If you hurry, you might still catch me. Otherwise, 
You can find my hiding place in the map in my diary. I'm sure you've already found it, right? Stay dirty. Love, Edna. The letter made Lily nervous. She had to catch up with Edna at all costs. Psst! Lily, hurry! This way! The doctor and Mother Superior are already hot on your heels! Lily looked all around in surprise. What kind of strange place was this? You're probably asking yourself what kind of strange place this is, right? But there's no time for explanations now. Come on, hurry! Stop dragging! Let's go! Stop! That's Dr. Marcel with Mother Superior. I don't think they've seen us yet. She isn't in her bunk, but she can't be far. I'm surprised that you tolerate this kind of insubordination in your convent. I'll have the entire ground search for her immediately. Do that. All of this seems unpleasantly familiar to me. Let's go. This is our chance. When Lily reached the swing tree, she found no trace of Edna. Garrett had vanished too, but the remnants of Edna's diary were lying in the grass. It had been burned and was no longer readable. Only the map of Edna's hiding place could still be deciphered. Ah, it's a cave at Moor Lake. Lily was just trying to memorize the way when... Psst, Lily! Hide! Dr. Marcel and Mother Superior are coming! Oh no! Too late! There she is! Huh! You probably thought you could escape my examination, huh? Or is there another reason for disobeying Mother Superior's instructions? Uh-huh. Well, let's hear it. Entertain us! This is taking too long for my taste. Was that really necessary? Not really, but it brought some satisfaction to an old man who has had to deal with defiant children one too many times. You must not contradict adults. You must not lie. You must not play with fire. You must not use sharp objects. You must not touch alcohol. You must not hang around dangerous places. You must not lose control. And you must never follow your own wishes. Woogie, woogie. Woogie, woogie. Woogie. <laughs> Woogie indeed. <laughs> and? Did it work? We'll find out in a moment. Lily, I'm sure you can tell me who's responsible for all the chaos in this institution. Woogie. <laughs> The chaos, Lily. Who's responsible? Now start talking, you useless ch 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 Remain calm, Mother Superior. She'll answer. She'll answer. Do you know the answer, Lily? Who's responsible? You can tell me, can't you? What's going on? What did she say? This case is more complicated than I thought. It's eminently important that you tell me something. Do you know a girl by the name of Edna?
Why do you ask? I think I've just pinpointed the root of all this evil. It's good that I was able to install all of the important behavioral blocks inside Lily with the aid of my new hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy? Hypnosuggestion, to be precise. The light diodes that I have installed in the eyes of this stuffed rabbit help me take direct control over Lily's free will. From now on, she will behave very calmly. But here, just try it out for yourself. Try it out? That's right. She's now as obedient as a little lamb. Well... Go ahead. Lily, serve the doctor and me some tea. Bravo! Ha ha ha. Well, I'm thirsty anyway. What do you say now, Lily? Would you like to serve her some tea? Uh-uh. <laughs> Psst, Lily. Don't be afraid, Lily. It's me, Garrett. Please, stay calm. You were hypnotized by Dr. Marcel, and now you're completely in his control. But don't worry, I can help you. But you'll have to come with me to my secret room. You can find the entrance in front of Mother Superior's office in the dark corner next to the fireplace. But first, I need your help. I've been watching Mother Superior and the Doctor for a long time, and I'm very close to unveiling their evil deeds. All I need is a confession. Here, take this extract of Deadly Nightshade. It's a truth serum. Pour it into Mother Superior's tea. As soon as she drinks it, she'll start spilling all of her secrets. Did you understand? Uh-huh. Excellent. Lily, what are you doing? You're supposed to be making us tea, not staring at paintings. Oh, don't be so harsh on her. Lily will complete her task. But I have to confess that I have also admired your gallery. I'm especially interested in this embroidery over here. It's a bit unusual. Don't you think? Oh, that one. It's just an old keepsake. Hardly worth mentioning. I can't even remember hanging it there. You can't? Interesting. What is it actually an embroidery of? An eight-legged unicorn? It's only the embroidery of a dumb, irresponsible... Ch 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 child Nothing else. Mm-hmm. There was only enough serum for one cup. This time, Lily wanted to do everything right. Lily! You clumsy good-for-nothing! Do you really want to embarrass me in front of the doctor? Hmm. That is strange. The hypnosis is foolproof. Ah, it was probably just an accident. The whole ch ch child is a total accident. If I could, could I would. But please, Mother Superior, do calm down. Lily will complete her task. Right, Lily? Uh huh. Well then, please bring us some more tea, okay? Be so kind. Lily didn't show it. But she was close to panicking. Serving more tea was no problem. But where would she get more truth serum from? Hello, Lily. You're not going to play with fire, are you? Uh-uh. I just wanted to be on the safe side. Lily carefully placed the kettle on the hook and made sure not to touch the fire. Lily's special tea was ready. She called it Pure Truth, a blend of rooibos and deadly nightshade.
Finally, it's about time. Stupid chop, chop, chop. <laughs> Are you feeling all right? You are downright hysterical. It's that embroidery. <laughs> it reminds me of my <laughs> childhood. <laughs> I was such a stupid <laughs> child. <laughs> I so wanted to have a unicorn for a pet. <laughs> Unicorn? Can you believe it? But what they gave me instead was <laughs> a tarantula. Ah, then you're the one who embroidered this. Shaggy died while I tried to attach a horn to her forehead with a nail gun. I was such a stupid child. <laughs> 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 I loathe children. <laughs> hmm. I understand. The adults seem to be busy with adult problems. This was Lily's chance. Hello, Lily. You're not going to play with fire, are you? Of course you don't want that. You know that Mother Superior has forbidden it. Something weird was happening here. Hello, Lily. You're not going to play with fire, are you? Of course you don't want that. You know that Mother Superior has forbidden it. Something weird was happening here. A burning torch would have lit up the darkness much better. Unfortunately, the torch had gone out. Nevertheless, Lily was proud she knew so much about how torches worked. Well done, Lily. I've heard everything I wanted to hear. Mother Superior's obviously gone gaga. I'd already suspected that. Now hurry. Come to me in the secret room. There's a hidden door in the dark corner in front of the office. Right next to the fireplace outside. Yes. Oh, damn. Of course you can't make any light. You're not allowed to play with fire. I'd completely forgotten about that. One moment. Let me think. Hmm. I think I have an idea. There isn't any way to break through a block created by hypnosis. Unless you get hypnotized again. It's risky, but you could put yourself in a trance and fight the block directly in your own subconscious. But be warned, the world inside of a trance is an eerie place. It's like a parallel universe that only exists in your mind. Traversing it without the guidance of a trained hypnotist has its dangers. And the blocks created by the doctor will probably appear as powerful demons that you can only defeat in a mental duel. Did you understand all that? You don't have to. Not yet. Just use the stuffed rabbit to hypnotize yourself. Once you're in a trance, look for the inner demon that's preventing you from making a fire and destroy him. You must not play with fire. Woogie. With the rabbit's help, 
Lily had returned into a trance. At first glance, everything had seemed unfamiliar and strange, completely alone. She cowered inside a cold cave that was illuminated by the giant, suspicious eye of Mother Superior. So there really wasn't much difference to reality. Ow! The dust! My eyes burning! Who was that? Oh, it's burning! Just wait! When I find whoever's flinging all that dirt around, they're in for a nasty surprise. Mother Superior closed her tearing eye. Lily could move unobserved for now. Lily could hardly believe her eyes. A real cylinder. Right on top of the head of the talking snowman. Um... The fireplace is closed. Good children don't play with fire. And you're a good child, aren't you? Uh-huh. You see? There's no reason why well-behaved girls like you should have anything to do with burning objects. But... Ba -ba 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 -ba. Not one. Got it? Lily wasn't convinced. Garrett had said she should use the fire to make light. That seemed to be a good reason to her. But how was she ever going to convince the demon of this? Either bone collectors were hunting big animals here, or someone had started making a prehistoric loom. Lily had enough ribs. They were easy to count, but Mother Superior had forbidden it because it ruined her appetite. After dealing with the curtain, Mother Superior had apparently taken her contact lenses out. Strange. In the real world, Mother Superior wore glasses. But in the real world, Mother Superior wasn't 50 feet tall either. So it was probably fine. My goodness, what's that? What's that strange smell? It doesn't smell like carrots, that's for sure. That's... That's... Fire! Ah, I'm burning! Take off my hat! Take it off! Lily wasn't quite sure. She wasn't actually allowed to play with fire. Now do something, Lily. Take off my hat. Take it off. Thanks, Lily. You saved me. Now you see the damage that fire can do. It's best not to touch it. <gasps> Lily was a little contrite. Apparently the snowman hadn't learned anything. What's happening now? Hey, stop that, no, no, no. Lily had put out the fire, just like the snowman had told her to. Hopefully, he now realized that there were quite appropriate situations where one could play with fire. Congratulations! Lily has acquired a new skill. She can now get around the ban on playing with fire. All she has to do is cancel it in her new Don'ts menu by clicking on it with the left mouse button. Keep this option in mind. Throughout the game, Lily will learn to bypass many other restraints using this technique. But keep in mind that only one ban can be revoked at a time.
With the help of the torch, Lily could finally inspect the mysterious bracket. What a surprise! It was a torch bracket, but there was still no trace of the promised secret passage. It was true! A secret passage! Garrett was right once again. Lily, you did it! Perfect! I think you're finally ready to know the truth. Well, where should I start? You. Maybe I should introduce myself first. My full name is Chief Deputy Garrett Gordon Gardengore. I'm an undercover investigator for the juvenile department. I took a position in the convent as a cover to observe Mother Superior. My assignment is to uncover evidence proving her educational methods violate youth protection laws. But Dr. Marcel is an even bigger fish to fry. Compared to him, Mother Superior is a saint. Lily could hardly believe what she was hearing. But now it all made sense. The secret room, the listening devices, and the strained voices she kept hearing at night. It was all coming together to form a coherent overall picture. The... Ah, ah, ah. Before you ask me any questions, let me quickly tell you one more thing about the hypnosis. This Harvey hypnosis is the doctor's devilish invention. He apparently uses this stuffed rabbit to force his will on you. If we want to get out of here, then you're going to have to fight the behavioral rules he's installed inside you. You can also take on the other behavior blocks, just like you did the one stopping you from playing with fire. But it means you'll have to put yourself back in a trance. The first challenge will be leaving the school grounds. Mother Superior has forbidden you from doing this. And because of the behavior block, you're incapable of being disobedient. The solution is to once again fight the block while you're in a trance. We have to tackle the problem at its source. No. Let me finish. As I said, Dr. Marcel is a much bigger fish. The police has been after him for a while. He's suspected of using illegal therapy methods that rob children of their childhood. And the hypnosis he subjected you to confirms this suspicion. Call. Call the police? Ha! Lily, I am the police. I can help you and get you to safety. We just have to get off the school grounds somehow. I think the best way is to follow in your friend Edna's footsteps. But first, I want to answer any questions you have. So? No questions? Uh-uh. How disappointing. Oh well, okay. Let's go to the tree swing. Actually, the ball of wool should have stayed in the treasure chest for all eternity as a symbol of friendship. But Lily was running out of options. Hello, Lily. You're not trying to leave the school grounds, are you? You know that Mother Superior has forbidden it. And you do know... You must not contradict adults. It's possible to have lots of fun without defying the rules set by adults. We could sort your marbles according to colors. Or come up with a counting rhyme for folding laundry. No matter how tempting the funny rabbit suggestions were, Lily had to get through the fence and find Edna. What do you have there? Can I see it? Uh-huh. Woo! A ball of wool! Yippee! But that's... that's... Woogie! With the rabbit's help, Lily had returned into a trance. In the distance, she could see the giant Mother Superior stomping around in front of her cave. And over there, where in reality had been a huge gap in the fence, there was now a cobweb with a giant spider in the center. This had to be the second demon for her to defeat.
A giant spider was blocking the path leading down from the mountain. Its eyes were flashing belligerently. Maybe it wanted to be petted. Between all the gnawed on human bones was a rib that reminded Lily of a unicorn's horn. Lily was delighted. The tar pit was bubbling invitingly. Unfortunately, Lily didn't have time for a bath. Lily was curious whether this would have any effect. When Lily saw how Mother Superior took this spider in her arms, her heart melted. Suddenly, Mother Superior no longer seemed so big and grown up. She emerged from her trance with a blissful smile on her lips. Lily had overcome her second behavioral block. She might still only have been able to ignore one rule, but it was better than nothing. It was already dusk when Lily set off down the convent hill. You're late. Where have you been all this time? Um... Save it. Save it. <sighs> there's a time for words and a time for action. And there's a third time. The time for sitting at the police station and filling out forms. And that time has come. Uh-uh. What now? Ah, don't say anything. You want your girlfriend. What's her name? Oh, uh, Edna, right? Uh-huh. <sighs> I could tell right away that that girl meant overtime. But if she's still alive, I'll probably have to take care of this too. Although I think it's much more likely that Dr. Marcel has already found her and used a wood chipper to turn her into pig feed. If that's the case, I'll find that out too. So don't worry about your little girlfriend anymore. <sighs> Why do I always have to be so damn compassionate? It's a curse. Oh well. Wait here while I investigate a few things. I'll watch the path to the institution. Maybe I'll learn something that way. If I discover anything, I'll give you a signal. I'll make an owl call. Ooh, ooh, or something like that. You won't miss it. Wait here for me. I'm sure it will only take a few hours. The, the... Lily was immensely relieved that Edna's fate was now in the hands of this exceptionally competent youth investigator. However, she would have liked to have shown him the map with the directions to Edna's hiding place. But Garrett had already disappeared. Lily risked a glance at the map. She could see more lake from here. Edna's hiding place couldn't be that far. You're not planning on running into the moor after dark, are you? Don't you know how dangerous that is? You must not hang around dangerous places. There are so many other nice places for children to visit. The Agricultural Museum, for example. Or the Job Information Center at the Employment Office. Lily was starting to think that the funny stuffed rabbit wasn't so funny after all. She stubbornly risked another look at the map. You must not hang around dangerous places. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, I'm sorry. I certainly didn't want to startle you. We're friends, after all. And friends don't play pranks on each other. Thank you. 
Lily arrived just in time to see the flying topography tool disappear through a grilled window. The bar suggested that this was a lion cage. The map lay out of reach. What? Oh. Oh. Just a little girl. What are you doing out here in the middle of the night? Aren't you worried that the loonies will catch you? Uh-uh. Well, you should be. So hurry. Get back to bed. Or did you want to make a complaint? Uh-huh. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, this had to happen someday. And who do you want to make a complaint about, if I may ask? Uh-huh. You don't mean yourself. Do you? Uh-huh. Ha <laughs> ha! Police! What terrible things could a little girl like you have done? Children your age can't even be charged with a crime. The only reason to lock up a young kid like you would be to sober you up. But I'm sure a girl who looks as well behaved as you already knows to stay away from alcohol, right? Uh-huh. You see? Of course, if you insist, you can take a voluntary alcohol test anyway. The machine is over there, against the wall. But I can't arrest you if you haven't gone and drunk nothing. Oh! What do we have here? A little girl, without parents, all alone in the night. How sweet. What brings you into this dark dive where no one can hear you scream? Alcohol. I can't serve children alcohol. I'm missing the recipe for the only alcoholic cocktail on the menu. The Volcano Berserker. Plus, I ran out of the ingredients. So, if you want a drink, you'll have to get me the right ingredients. And then, the drinks will be free. Here, the menu. A volcano berserker? Hmm. Sorry about that, sweetie. Unfortunately, I don't have the recipe. The previous owner took it to the grave. Or wherever. But they haven't found him yet, and they won't. Not where they're looking. What? I... wait. No! This isn't Aunt Gorgula. My name is Miranya. Miranya the Medium. How many more times do I have to tell you? What? But that's... one moment. Please stay on the line. Sorry, little girl. This could take a moment. It's that bartender Max Mixo again. A real pain in the ass. So dead, and yet so talkative. Come to think of it, the spirits are very unsettled today. They're all talking over each other. If only I had earplugs. What was that? Now listen to me, my dear lady. I'm not a greeting cards courier. I'm sure that... Max Mixo, would you please shut up for a moment? Because there are others who... Who? 
No, I don't know anyone called Priscilla. Maranya was busy. Lily could completely understand that. She knew how hard it was to ignore spirits, especially those that tried to grab you at night. Hmm? What? Oh, hi, little girl. What do you have there? Are those earplugs? Fabulous. Thank you. It's exactly what I need right now. Hmm. No, these are too big. So, hello? Can anyone hear me? Ah, oh, much better. Yes, loud and clear. Who wants to be first? Max Mixo? I could have guessed that. Could you possibly do me another favor? Uh-huh. It's about Max Mixo, the previous bartender at the village bar. He's worried about his legacy. The volcano berserker. He'd always hoped that this drink would make him immortal someday. We both know that his plan failed, but now he literally took the recipe to his grave, and he so wanted to leave it to posterity. <sighs> it's very simple. The cocktail only has three ingredients. Wine gum, Artemisia, and... A chili pepper. Did you get that? Uh-huh. Thank you, Lily. Maybe the great Max Mixo can finally find peace. And me, too. <laughs> if you want to order anything, just point it out to me on the menu. A volcano berserker? Have you got all the ingredients? Uh-uh. No? Then I can't help you, sweetie. Coming right up. Oh, by the way, that's a non-alcoholic cocktail. But don't worry, there's enough other illegal substances in it. The path that Garrett had taken led Lily to a small bridge over one of the brackish creeks running off from Moore Lake. Two trustworthy looking men in white lab coats were working there. Lily wasn't quite sure what to make of them. She also recognized Garrett in the bushes on the other shoreline. Apparently, he didn't want to be seen by the two men. And although the two nocturnal workers had made a friendly impression on Lily, she decided to follow the youth investigator's lead. And? Have you found anything yet? Do you have to keep asking that? I'll let you know if I discover something. Yeah, I guess you're right. I think Dr. Marcel's madness is starting to rub off on me. Ever since we found this stuffed rabbit by the lake, he's been obsessed. We should be taking care of patients instead of poking around the moor. And then there's that absurd plan with the hypnosis doll. Stop already. And keep looking. Have you actually found anything yet? Well... Lily had heard enough. Apparently, the men in white were Dr. Marcel's minions. It appeared that Edna's concern had been justified. Dr. Marcel really was looking for her. It was now more important than ever to find Edna's hiding place. There was a sign on the feeding trough. Don't feed the saber-toothed boars. Saber-toothed boars are very dangerous. In the event of an encounter, make sure you don't look like a well-behaved convent schoolgirl. Saber-toothed boars are nocturnal, grow up to six feet long, and like to lurk in the shadows. They can be frequently found near the territorial herb Artemisia, since they mark their territory on the leaves of this plant. Therefore, avoid areas where this herb grows after dark. The Forest Ranger. Lily would have gladly heeded the warning, but she had no idea how to recognize Artemisia. <laughs> if the saber-toothed boars had to mark their territory, then they should do it properly.
If you want to order anything, just point it out to me on the menu. A volcano berserker coming right up. But be careful, that drink packs a punch. And I'm not talking about punchy colada if you catch my drift. But Lily, what's that for? That's not good for little children. You must not touch alcohol. And milk is much better for your teeth anyway. <laughs> Look at my funny chompers. They're cute, aren't they? Uh-huh. Woo! The ball of wool. Can I see it again? Mm. Uh-huh. Lily had heard that mayonnaise spoiled quickly in the sun. Lily liked the cold. It reminded her of her bed. Those were Cuban cigars. These dogs were playing poker in style. The dogs had placed their bets. Now it was Lily's turn. Hey, look, the ugly girl wants to play, too. Then she has to place her bet. She can't play without a bet. Meow. Step right up, step right up, and admire the latest accomplishments in modern medicine. Anti-wrinkle cream with skin-firming materials from outer space. Natural food supplements with amusing motifs from the animal world. Our brand new product, the pill for in-between for all those who didn't have time before and don't want to wait till afterwards. Step right up, marvel at the sights, and take a free sample of Alcofix. The exclusive miracle treatment with an alcohol base. It tastes 100 proof and works 100 proof. Hello, little lady. Are you interested in a sample bottle of Alcofix, the miracle brandy? Uh-huh. Hmm. You actually look pretty healthy to me. And I'm afraid even Alcofix won't fix that problem with your ears. Do you have any bad pains? Incurable genetic diseases? Tinnitus? Hepatitis? Cervical cancer? Uh-uh. Hmm. Yeah. I'm so sorry for you, but I can't give you a sample of Alcofix like you are now. Come back when you're sick. Somewhere on the horizon, a donut factory seemed to be having problems with its chimney. Lily seemed to be surrounded by strange birds today. How sweet. Meep. Yeah, yeah. Right back at you. Tell me, uh, you weren't planning on decaying in the next couple of days, were you? Uh-uh. Uh, oh, well. No problem, huh? I should be cutting down on carcasses anyway. My dietician is uh, pulling his hair out. More fresh fruit, he says. I have a salad to no ends in. I know all that. But what can I do, huh? I just love that rotten stuff. I just had to smell the rotting flesh. And I start circling. And honestly, out here in the desert, huh? It's hard to maintain a healthy diet. You try and leave something for later. 
and the bacteria just move right in. You could get the most horrible diseases, huh? Festering boils, uh, oozing eczema. Oh, man, all this talk of food has made me hungry. Please, uh, leave me alone with my growling belly. A sign informed Lily that this reconstruction of an original Indian sundial had been donated by the Association of Experimental Art. It was possible to turn the pedestal. Lily looked around. Why was there never anyone around to stop you from doing something when you needed it the most? Step right up, step right up, and admire the latest accomplishments in modern medicine. Anti-wrinkle cream with skin-firming materials from outer space. Natural food supplements with amusing motifs from the animal world. Our brand new product, the pill for in-between, for all those who didn't have time before and don't want to wait till afterwards. Step right up, marvel at the sights, and take a free sample of Alcofix. The exclusive miracle treatment with an alcohol base. It tastes 100 proof and works 100 proof. Oh, it's you again. No, don't bother coming any closer. Not unless you've picked up a contagious disease since I last saw you. Uh -huh. Do you have any bad pains? Incurable genetic diseases? Tinnitus? Hepatitis? Cervical cancer? Why? Hello? What do we have here? <laughs> You've really caught something very special there. Congratulations! This definitely qualifies you to test a sample of Alcofix, the miracle brandy. To be honest, you almost look overqualified. Your rash is so severe. I'm not sure even Alcofix can heal it. Bravo! You might as well just take the entire bottle. The color of the bottle reminded Lily of someone. You must not touch alcohol. Huh? Had that bottle just talked? Huh? <laughs> Are you Nuts? You could easily get sick and cold, which does, which doesn't mean that I'm sick, and I don't need this this alcoholic devil stuff either. Oh, th th thanks. Ugh, what's that? Quick, the medicine. So yum, finally tasty. So nice, so nice. The genie had broken his own rule. Apparently, it was okay to have a swig or two in certain situations. What? What you doing? Oh no!
What's the matter? Is something wrong with your drink? Uh-uh. Hmm. What's the matter? It tastes great. That bubbling in your lungs is, uh... uh, uh, uh. Wagga, wagga, wagga! What's this? You're as drunk as a skunk. Come on, off to the drunk tank with you. Let this be a lesson to you. Drinking at your age. Tisk, tisk, tisk. And finally, there it was, the map. Lily was excited. A hamster. So that was the mystery behind the escaping map. Maybe Lily had finally found a new friend. But maybe everything was as before. And finally, there it was. The map. Edna had hidden in this cave by Moore Lake. But... Wait a second. Lily already knew that. The map was, in reality, pretty useless. Especially when Lily thought about everything she had done to get her hands on it. Uh, what's the matter? You've already had enough of the filtered air? You should have thought of that before reaching for the bottle. <sighs> oh, come on. Don't be so sad. That's exactly the kind of behavior that once made me release Edmund the Slasher. You can't even imagine how much trouble I got into for that. It took weeks until little Melanie's parents spoke to me again. Huh. Oh, I'm just too soft-hearted. I'll let you go. But you have to promise me never to get into trouble again. Can you do that? You must not lie. Woo! The ball of wool. Can I see it again? Mm. Uh huh. Woogie. Woogie. Hi, Lily. Don't tell me you want to get out. Uh-huh. I thought so. But you'd hardly be sitting in there if you knew how to behave properly, right? Uh-huh. Be quiet. You weren't about to contradict me, were you? Uh-huh. Well, I can't object to that. Contradictions are great. Sometimes I start contradicting at breakfast. For example, three slices of toast. Yum, delicious toast. Um, 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 um. Uh, but, but that would be a lie. And we both know. You must not lie. Lies are evil. Uh-uh. What? Of course lying is evil. Wait, I'll show you on this blackboard. Take a close look at this board. It shows some of the basic principles of our legal system. For example, that lying is evil. Um... What do you mean? No. Of course lying is evil. It can easily be deduced from the four top principles. God is good and true, but the devil is evil and has great wisdom. 
God is truth because he is full of wisdom too. But the devil lies with all of his evil. That's why lies are always evil. You can construct the chain of logic leading to this conclusion yourself. It only takes three small steps to get the result. You can try it yourself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes, that's logical. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes, that's logical. All right. Lies are what? Lies are good? But, but that can't be true. Uh, everything seems to fit. But, but that's... Apparently, Justicia was wrong. It seemed that lies weren't so bad after all. Lily had removed another block. Oh, come on. Don't be so sad. I'll let you go, but you have to promise me never to get into trouble again. Can you do that? Uh-huh. So you promise? No more trouble, okay? Uh-huh. And you're not fibbing? Uh-uh. Okay, then. I guess I'll just have to believe you, then. Welcome to freedom. Let this be a lesson to you. Uh-huh. As long as it's still dark outside, you should really stay indoors. It's much too dangerous out there at night. Huh? It's best to just stay at home. But Lily, where are you going? You heard that it's dangerous out there. You must not hang around dangerous places. There are so many other nice places for children to visit. At a spelling bee, for example. Or a Rolf Harris concert. Mm. Lily wanted to become a gold digger too when she grew up. Then she'd finally have her own pickaxe. Um. Um. Howdy, stranger. What's a nice little girl like you doing in a rough place like this? Wait. You're not here for the gold rush too, are you? Well, then you might as well just pack up your bags again. The only gold around here is in my mine. And I'm the only one who knows the way there. Plus, you can't get in there right now anyway. Well, forget it. The way to my mind is top secret. Even I have trouble remembering it. Oh, I should actually ride over there again. Oh. I knew it. You're after my gold. Well, you can just forget it. My gold mine is good and hidden. And even if you found it, you wouldn't get in. 
The entrance is guarded by a Wendigo. Lily wasn't interested in the mine, but this Wendigo made her curious. Could he be another manifestation of her behavioral blocks? Perhaps it would be worthwhile to look for the mine after all. We... You don't know what a Wendigo is, do you? Uh-uh. Well, I don't know much myself. It's some kind of Indian demon that's stopping me from getting into my mind. If you want to know more, you need to ask the shaman. He's knocking around here somewhere. Sure. The shaman? No idea. I never met him personally. Sometimes I see his smoke signals on the horizon. That's it. But if anyone can tell you about Wendigos, it's him. Somewhere on the horizon, a donut factory seemed to be having problems with its chimney. As Lily stared into the flames, she suddenly became dizzy. <coughs> Hi, Lily. Did you enjoy your little excursion? Uh-huh. For players. I'm a dog. Is that you, little girl? What are you doing in limbo? Don't tell me you're... Uh-uh. In this case, I unfortunately have to ask you to get off the line. I have a few seances to finish here. Is that you, little girl? What are you doing in limbo? Don't tell me you're... Uh-huh. Oh, dear. You poor little thing. I hope you remember to get someone to put coins for the ferryman on your eyes. Uh-uh. That's just terrible. It's hard to pass through limbo without any pocket change. And, unfortunately, there's only one way to bring worldly goods into the spirit realm or with you in a trance state, you place them on the eyes. Lily wasn't sure if someone as young as her should drink coffee, but there was no behavioral block, so it was probably okay. Incredible. The coffee was so strong that it jarred Lily out of her trance. On the third day, God created Blowfish, and no one was there to praise him. Wow! 
Wagga! Wagga, wagga, wagga! Lily put the money on the bartender's eyes. Since he was sleeping, she only left him a small tip. Where are you going? You heard that it's dangerous out there. You must not hang around dangerous places. There are so many other nice places for children to visit. At a spelling bee, for example. Or a Rolf Harris concert. Mm. Well, if it isn't the little girl from the bar. Look what I've got here. Someone put money on the eyes of my mortal remains. It's more than enough to pay the ferryman. Go ahead, take the rest. I'm not sticking around. Maybe I'll crawl out of one or two more TV screens, but then it's off to eternity for me. It's more than enough to pay the ferryman. Go ahead. Take the rest. Ah, Madame is making her move. I guess that means she wants to play. Wag, wag. What are you waiting for? I wag my tail, but I'm happy. Come on now. Because I'm a dog. Join us. Five seconds later. Oh boy, you're by far the most miserable poker player I've ever seen. You didn't even smoke your cigar. Don't forget to take it. I have fleas. Lily interpreted the strange smoke signals to mean that the shaman was looking for a totem pole. As nice as she was, she decided to help him with it.
The shaman had finally arrived at the totem pole. Lily was looking forward to visiting him. Finally, she would meet the mysterious medicine man. Mom, AFK, RE, oui. auto completion. Did you mean Wendigo? Uh huh. Wait, got it. Wigwampedia entry. Wendigo. A Wendigo. Omnivore. Also, Wendigo. Plural. Wendigos. Demon from Anishinaabe mythology. Wendigos are considered to be especially stubborn and inflexible. FYI. They stink horrendously. Lol. We Auto completion. Did you mean weapon against Wendigos? Uh-huh. W8. Just getting it on TP Bay. Print order confirmation. Yes. No. Cancel. Uh-huh. Print. Here. Apparently, there is only one effective method to combat Wendigos. Give this recipe to the quack doctor. He should have received the order. I hacked his Wi-Fi. And while you're at it, I ordered something on Appalachia Zone. It's, um, not really for me. I clicked on a pop-up by accident. But seeing as you're going there anyway, can you pick it up for me? Thanks. Prescription. Wonderful. Now, let's see. Uh -huh. uh, aha. Uh, oh. Yes, I received this order here. And while you're at it, I have a delivery for the shaman here. Would you mind taking it to him? There was a can in the package. Lily was excited. Air removal cream. Step up! Step right up! Oh, it's you again. Sorry, I don't have any more free samples left. Even if you still look like you could use one. All I have left is only available at completely justifiable yet exorbitant prices. Or with a prescription. Lily secretly put the junk food into the saddlebag. It was going to be a surprise. My gold mine is good and hidden. Hmm. I should actually ride over there again. The vultures were circling above a particular spot on the horizon. That was probably where the gold digger's mine was located. Judging by the smell, that had to be the Vendigo. The shaman was right. He really had a beastly stench. Um? Here she is, our demon killer. Huh? Did I surprise you? I know what you've done to my brethren, but you won't succeed with me. I'm always on guard, and you should be too. Do you see the mine back there? Uh-huh. I know why I stay away from it. It's about to collapse, and the suspended bridge is wobbly, and it's as dark as a buffalo's butt. Who knows what dangers lurk there? 
so I'd rather stay out here, in the sun, where it's safe. Nothing and no one can budge me from here. Nor for my opinion, dangerous locations are no place for little children, no matter what you say. The shaman was right. The Wendigo was really a stubborn fellow, and he stank so much that the thought of a buffalo's butt was a welcome relief. Are you crazy? Stop that! Those spray cans contain tons of CFCs! If that stuff gets into the atmosphere, we'll have an ozone hole here in no time! You don't want a hole in the ozone layer, do you? Uh-uh. You see? It was so hot that the air smelled of ozone. But even back here, the fragrances of summer couldn't compete with the Wendigo's stench. Lily decided to do something about it. Oh, the sky looks strange. It could be an ozone hole approaching. That's not good. Where's my suntan lotion? Ah, uh, there it is. I'd better leave it outside. Safe is safe. Hey, stop that. I, I need my suntan lotion. We could get an ozone hole any moment. Uh-oh, it's starting. Quick! Apply the lotion. What a drag. The sun had badly damaged the Wendigo. Apparently, nowhere was safe. That meant it was inevitable to spend time in dangerous places. At long last, Lily had reached her destination. She had faced a thousand dangers, and finally, she now stood in Edna's hiding place. There was just one catch. Edna was gone. That was a bad sign. Edna never went anywhere without her owl whistle. Edna had left a message. Hopefully, she was all right. Lily, help! I'm being devoured alive by a giant tentacled creature. Ah, wah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> just kidding. I'm fine. I was just watching the bridge down by the river through my telescope. Dr. Marcel's minions seem to be planning something. I'll check it out up close. If I don't return, you have to get help. But don't worry. I'll be careful. Where are my kettle drum and my strobe flashlight? Dang. Well, see you soon. Toodaloo. Lily was relieved by the letter. But what if Dr. Marcel's men had caught her friend? Lily had to get to the bridge and look for Edna. She would find Garrett there too.
This damn piece of junk. Can you believe it? We finally found the girl, and now the car won't start. Should I perhaps push? This car should have been inspected months ago. But ever since the accident, the doctor has let everything go downhill. It's a shame. So, it was true. The attendants had already found Edna. Why wasn't Garrett doing anything? Lily somehow had to get his attention. That was a bad sign. Edna never went anywhere without her owl whistle. It was hopeless. Lily would never catch Garrett's attention while the owl kept interfering. An owl had made itself comfortable in the tree. It was hopeless. Lily would never catch Garrett's attention while the owl kept interfering. Lily was able to finally give Garrett the signal without being interrupted. Lily was able to finally give Garrett the signal without being interrupted. Garrett didn't seem to hear Lily's owl call at all. She tried once more, this time a little louder. Did you hear that too? Someone's out there. Just wait. We'll take care of it. Well, who do we have here? But that's... Uh-oh. Lily thoughtfully watched the fleeing attendants for a long while. She was used to having bizarre phantoms appear behind her without warning. But the way Dr. Marcel's minions had reacted surprised her. Usually adults just ignored these creatures. Lily, 
Oh, thank goodness. I thought they'd caught you. Unfortunately, Edna wasn't as lucky. I saw how she was snatched and taken back to the institution. This gives us all the evidence we need. I will contact the task force leaders right away. It's best if you stay put until I come back with reinforcements. However, it could take some time. And I can't guarantee that Edna will still be alive when we finally get the green light. If we're lucky, Dr. Marcel will torture her for a while before finally dissecting her or... whatever else it is he intends to do with her. That would give us some time. She'll probably have to part with a few toes or fingers. Oh well, that's the way it goes. In any case, you wait here. I'll come and pick you up from exactly this spot tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, at the latest. Although the day after tomorrow is a holiday, but oh well, you'll see. Just wait here. Lily would have really liked to follow Garrett's instructions, but, well, there were excellent reasons for doing what she did instead. The institution's post-Victorian masonry work had a friendly air about it. It was almost as if the architect had tried to spell out, welcome with bricks and barbed wire. This unspoken invitation found its culmination in a nearly overgrown back door, and Lily intended to graciously accept it. Exhausting the limits of her powers of deduction, Lily tried opening the back door with the key, but just as she approached the obstacle, she heard a familiar cackling. What a little scoundrel. The sneaky hamster had once again crossed Lily's plans. But despite this, Lily had no intentions of exacting a bloody revenge. Lily was glad. It was so rare that her friends got along so well with each other. Of course, this was also because she hardly had any friends. Much more important, however, was that the asylum key was no longer out of reach. It had fallen into one of the dark bushes. The key had fallen into the bush. It was very dark in there, but Lily wasn't afraid. Um. After all, it was just a bush. Yeah. Why did the child have to be so careless all the time? Well, who do we have here? A little girl. Just stay where you are, okay? Hey, stop!
Hey, come back. Give up. You can't get away. Especially not against the current. Hey, come back. Triumphantly, Lily climbed the ladder. She had finally found a way to get into the institution. Not so fast. <coughs> Although she was briefly distracted by a floating energy smarty, Lily was able to reach the ledge. Not a moment too soon as the ladder crashed down behind her, dragging the phantom into the pit with it. No! Fortified by the energy smarty, Lily was able to pull herself up on the ledge. Now her search for Edna could continue. The map had more holes in it than Lily socks. The mice there were apparently quite desperate. The lamp was glowing red. Um, hey, that's my fireplace. You shouldn't be here unless you want to bring presents or sweep the chimney. Not that the soot is bothering me. That was the old Mr. Frock. The new Mr. Frock is enjoying the dirt. Ah, oh, dirt. You see? Um, yes, I know that it's dirty here. So what? I love the cobwebs, the dust, and that rotting substance in the corner. I just finished combing it. I wouldn't dust here even if you put a feather duster right in my hand. You don't have a feather duster, do you? Um, uh, stop. I don't want to know. That's Mr. Frock to you. And in case you're wondering what a piece of clothing like me is doing inside a fireplace, I'm acquiring soot. That's right. I used to be very fastidious about staying clean. But then this impertinent person came along and dared to spill something on me. The stains never came out. My clothing is black and greasy. My socks haven't been ironed. And I even have fleas. Karen and Bertram. I'd introduce them to you, but they're sleeping right now. Duh. You don't need to mumble like that. Ever since Dr. Marcel's accident, we can make as much noise here as we want. He's no longer interested in what's going on inside the asylum. All of his attention is focused on finding Edna. Uh. Somehow you remind me of a patient we used to have here. She was a little taller than you. And I think I remember two red horns and a tail. Um... I'm living in a sooty chimney. So what? I used to be very fastidious about staying clean. Now, I don't care anymore. You're now speaking with the dark Mr. Frock, who eats his gummy bears without a napkin. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. The idea was good, but Lily's arms were too short. 
Were there other Belgian pizza delivery services in the area? Somebody had left their credit card in their coat pocket. A certain... Hey! That was Dr. Marcel's credit card. How about that? Moths fluttered around the dim light of the lamp. They were apparently searching for food. Lily had inadvertently broken off the leg of the chair. It was as pointy as a knife. Hopefully the funny little rabbit hadn't seen anything. But Lily, what are you doing there? Don't you remember? You must not use sharp objects. Just don't touch it, okay? See you around. Were there other Belgian pizza delivery services in the area? Welcome to Spamish Pizza Service. My name is Pokey. Can I take your order? Um... The one on the asylum, is that right? I assume that we just shove it under the gate as usual. What toppings? Uh... Hello? Hello? Can I take your order? Uh... One with nothing coming up. Consider it done. It'll be about 30 to 45 minutes. Have a nice day. But Lily, what are you doing there? Don't you remember? You must not use sharp objects. Just don't touch it, okay? See you around. Surprised to see me again? Yes, keep kicking. You won't escape me again. And now hold still until I've decided what to do with you. Lily considered this option, but instead did the following. The Phantom didn't look like he was open for negotiations. You must not contradict the doll. Strange. The silly rabbit didn't even react to Lily's ball of wool. You must not use sharp objects. The Phantom didn't look like he was open for negotiations. Ha, 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 ha. 
What's going on, brave warrioress? Too weak? <laughs> Lily didn't want to appear greedy. One feather would be enough, just like a Christmas dinner at the convent. <laughs> Stop that! <laughs> <laughs> Stop that! <laughs> <laughs> Well, you are very brave to come so close to me. Can't you see my teeth, my spikes, and my sharp claws? Didn't anyone ever tell you to stay away from sharp objects? That would be a tragic error. I'd advise you to stay away from my spikes. A good little girl like you shouldn't play with sharp objects. The pain! You dead brat! Look what you did! Don't just stand there! Do something! <laughs> <sighs> Thanks. That was close. I... Uh-oh. This demon had also made a mistake. It seemed that in certain situations, it really was necessary to handle sharp objects. Lily returned victoriously to reality. You must not use sharp objects. Ah! My eye! Damn you! Oh, you disobedient brat! Damn! Lily fought for air. The phantom's grip was tight around her throat. Disobedient! It had said, One feather would be enough, just like a Christmas dinner at the convent. <sighs> the door was firmly locked. Bitty, 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 whoosh. Welcome to the laundrette. That was your cue to say, this is supposed to be a laundrette. And I'll answer, of course. Oh, admittedly, it's a little rusted, but necessity is the mother of invention. 
mother knows best. And now we're doing our laundry in the urinals. Too wishy-washy for you? What other choice do we have? Exactly none. You don't have to, you know. Just make sure that the fabrics are separated properly. The toilet sanitizers really stay. We'll do the red laundry in the urinal with the red toilet sanitizer. Yellow laundry in the urinal with the yellow toilet sanitizer. Blue laundry in the urinal with the blue toilet sanitizer. And green laundry in the urinal with the green toilet sanitizer. If you want to try it, just show me some clothing with the right color. Then you can use the matching urinal as often as you want. It seemed the laundry there was neatly sorted and washed according to differently colored urinals. Lily thought that you can take cleanliness a bit too far sometimes. It seemed the laundry there was neatly sorted and washed according to differently colored urinals. Lily thought that you can take cleanliness a bit too far sometimes. Goodness, who do we have here then? Another player! Yippee. Don't pay any attention to him. Peter just sees black all the time. He was born that way. <laughs> That's true. Peter suffers from color blindness. Struggle jug. Well said, loyal friend. We all have our crosses to bear. Oh, yeah? Do you all wake up every morning knowing that one day you'll lie dead at the foot of a traffic light? Not exactly. But Druggle Jug, for instance, mixes up his blues and greens. You can't really compare the two. Your girlfriend Petra mixes up her yellows and greens. She's not my girlfriend. And we, King Adrian, mix up our reds and yellows. You should have been there when we played the board game. Sorry, Peter almost choked to death. I wanted to end my misery. Afterwards, we decided never to play a board game again. Only fantasy role-playing games instead. You decided that. And what did we just say? It's so exciting! We are a group of adventurers in the legendary world of Hope Motigore. Oh, please, why don't you join us? Struggle Jug? Not so fast. If the Fair Maiden wishes to join us in battle, she must first prove herself worthy. She must complete a task that puts her heroic valor to the test. Just tell her to order a pizza already so we can get on with it. Uh -huh. So be it. She shall order us pizza. Um, I want broccoli on the pizza, but no tomatoes, please. Struggle jug. Oh, no broccoli. Struggle jug. Bananas aren't bad either, but I could just die for broccoli. Oh, yes. Please do. For that, I'd even happily have bananas on a pizza. You only eat blueberries anyway. Yes, I like blueberries. But in this life, you never get what you want anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Upon the order of the king, blueberries will be banned from the pizza. Instead, knowest that tomatoes will grace the pizza dough from now on. But I don't like tomatoes. Lily had heard enough. It seemed impossible to get a pizza that everyone liked. Um, you're probably wondering why Draghi has a green pillow on his head, right? Druggle Jug? My goodness, she's right. What on earth are you wearing? You're embarrassing me in front of my new subject. Druggle Jug. <laughs> yes, it is a little strange. Wait until you've heard the explanation. Today should have been Blue Pillow Day. <sighs> Druggle Chuck. <sighs> Druggle Jug. I believe our guest is searching for the tyrant known as Dr. Marcel. 
Deliver her thy news. Druggle jug, druggle jug, druggle jug, druggle jug. Don't forget to mention the helicopter. Druggle jug. And was never seen again. Bravo. Well told, loyal friend. Since then, these lands have returned to the wise rule of a magnanimous king. We can do whatever we want. Does that mean I can finally sleep now? No. Um... Druggle jug. Don't, Druggy. You have to forgive him. He's colorblind, as we all are. Peter mixes up his reds and his greens. Adrian mixes up his reds and his yellows. Droggy mixes up his greens and his blues. And I mix up my yellows and my greens. Funny, isn't it? Hello, Lily. You're not going to play with fire, are you? Of course you don't want that. You know that Mother Superior has forbidden it. Lily, what are you doing there? Don't you remember? You must not use sharp objects. Just don't touch it, okay? See you around. <laughs> Dr. Marcel would surely be pleased. With the help of his credit card, Lily made some confetti. What do you have there? A feather duster? Not that I would want to have a feather duster. Oh, no. No matter how pretty they look. Which doesn't mean that I can't hold it for a second. Just one little second. That would be completely harmless. Don't you think? Give it to me now. Ah, what a relief. And just look. I even found my old spare sheets. Here, go ahead and take it. You... you've earned it. Hello, stranger. Before you say anything, please take a deep breath. <gasps> and is that what freedom smells like? Or is it just regular air consisting of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, soot from the asylum's new chimney, and a touch of diesel oil from the garage? Ah. <sighs> I don't want to seem melodramatic, but I'm somewhat skeptical about this so-called freedom. Ever since Dr. Marcel started neglecting his duties as head of this asylum, it's us, the patients, that carry the burden of creating our own boundaries. And before I'm able to measure up to this freedom, I do have to ask myself a few things. Maybe there are such things as good boundaries. And even in an ideal case, can I really decide where my own freedom starts and stops? It so happens that no one is preventing me from leaving the asylum. Does that mean I'm free? Can I just fly away, spread my wings, and leap from the asylum roof? The urge is there. Just like any bee, I long to buzz across fields of flowers collecting honey. But I'm still fighting it. Something about this freedom stinks. Mmm, that smells good. 
But even if the illusion is almost perfect, it's only artificial flavors and chemical esters. An almost perfect illusion, but not real. Like with everything here in the asylum, it's only a half-hearted attempt to trick us into thinking that we're free. And now that no one is stopping us from leaving the asylum, it provides us with a welcome excuse to refuse to leave. Right you are, stranger. I'm just running away from my responsibilities. The responsibility to myself, to accept the deal that the world out there has offered me. I thank you. I've made up my mind. I can't just sit around here doing nothing anymore. I should buzz across fields of flowers and collect honey. Toodaloo, asylum. Hey ho, freedom. Whee! Lily was glad that she had helped the bee man. Soon he would be in a better place. Lily had often wished to go to the zoo to feed the animals. Beep. It was even more beautiful than she had imagined. Lily knew that you could use starch to stiffen up laundry. It wouldn't hurt to give it a shot. Well, who said it? Now Lily had a stiff towel with holes. Yikes! What are you doing here? Are you actually... dead? Uh -uh. Too bad. I could use a little entertainment, but the doctor told me not to talk to other people. At least not living ones. Sorry. But I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Oh dear, Lily really had managed to ruin the sheet. But perhaps a sheet with two eye holes could be good for something. Oh dear, Lily really had managed to ruin the sheet. But perhaps a sheet with two eye holes could be good for something. Yikes! A ghost! How sweet! Finally someone to talk to. You have to help me. Dr. Marcel is wrongfully keeping me here in the asylum. Isn't there anything that you and your ghost buddies can do about it? Curse him? Deprive him of his sleep? Drag him into the seventh circle of hell and torture him for all eternity with red-hot needles? Oh, come on! I've done so much for you! I've performed obscure rituals, sacrificed chickens, danced naked... Although when I think about it... I'm not sure if it was really a ghost that asked me to do that. Ugh. I don't feel so well. Could you please take off your head while we're talking? Ooh, ooh. Oh, man. You're not very talkative. Can't you help me at all? Uh-huh. Great! Look at this! The doctor is forcing me to knit these stuffed rabbits. No idea what he needs them for, but I'm not very good at it. Maybe you could lend me a hand. Wait! I'll push some of the fabric through the hatch. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the red urinal as much as you like.
What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the green urinal as much as you like. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the yellow urinal as much as you like. What do you have there? Let me see. Oh, very good. You obviously understand the basic principle. Go ahead and use the blue urinal as much as you like. How about that? Green tomatoes. How about that? Yellow blueberries. How about that? Blue broccoli. How about that? Red bananas. Green tomatoes. Yellow blueberries. Blue broccoli. Red bananas. Well then, mmm, superb, superb. Great! I wish I were as good on the phone as you. Druggle jug. And Peter is satisfied too. Satisfied? How can I be satisfied in such a world in which the only moments worth living for are those when the pizza arrives with the right toppings? That means yes. We owe you one. Peter almost stopped. Death. It's not that bad. I've already lost all hope of dying honorably anyway. Druggle jug. Well said. Now that the food is taken care of, let us begin the game. Don't you want to play too, sweetie? You'll see. It'll be incredibly fun. If you take pleasure in such excessive self-degradation. That and a dice cup. Druggle jug. Uh-huh. So be it. Then follow us into the world of Hoth Mottigor. Your group has set up camp near the infamous Goblin Gorge. Lily found herself in a clearing. The campfire was crackling, and the wind whipped through her clothes. You can hear the war drums of the goblins in the distance. This is your last rest before the great battle. Lily did in fact hear drums. An enormous army seemed to be waiting for them in the nearby mountains. Wait, are you telling the story or am I? Uh, wh what? It's just that I see that you don't have the Dungeon Master screen in front of you. And I'm pretty sure that the Dungeon Master is recognized by his Dungeon Master's screen. That's ridiculous. I'm the narrator. I don't need a... Well, then why don't you be the Dungeon Master then? I'm curious how you'll do without any battle value tables or source books. What? But that's... That's what I thought. And now, move over. Ow! Hey! You can't just... Where was I? Oh, yes. You're here on the orders of the king to drive the goblins from the gorge. 
There are rumors that the goblins have dammed up the Pink River. This has turned Hothmotagor's most important memorial into a reservoir, the Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Also sitting at the fire is a mysterious local guide. You're tired from the journey. But sleep is far from your mind. Goblin scouts could be lurking anywhere. The black magician Petrula, the noble Sir Drogalot, and the amusing juggler Snippo. I want a different role. Shush! Are gathering their strength for the battle. Only the Amazonian barbarian warrioress Lilligrim. Huh? That's you! Only the Amazonian barbarian warrior Lilligrim is restless. It's your move, Lilligrim. What will you do? Hello, Lily Grimm. Would you like to be amused by my funny pranks? Then watch me. And are you amused? Um. Yes. It doesn't just look like it. I am actually juggling only one ball. And I know how ridiculous that must seem. My character sheet said that I... <clears throat> I, the comical Snippo have the marvelous ability to juggle 55 balls at once. But as much as I would have liked to imagine what such a thing would look like, the mysterious traveler thought I should just juggle one ball instead, because it's much more contemplative. And as long as my shame or boredom doesn't cause me to spontaneously combust, then I'll stick to that. If you have a better suggestion, no. You think I should try it without any balls? Bravo. You found the only way to increase my boredom even more. On the other hand, if I juggle without a ball, I might be able to take a quick nap. No one seems to object to sleeping around here. Don't startle me like that! Can't you see I'm watching the kettle? Um... If you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm brewing a diabolical magic potion, of course. <laughs> Well, it's actually a calming tea. I really wanted to conjure some coffee demons, but they don't let you get any sleep. And we do need our strength for the battle. Now I have to watch the kettle before it starts to whistle. The traveler has such sensitive ears. <laughs> um, don't you want to sleep? Uh-uh. I wonder why. Because I'm really exhausted. Oh, if you're staying up anyway, do you think you could watch the kettle? Uh-huh. Oh, great. Then I can finally get some sleep. As you know, we need our strength for... Oh, oh, for the battle. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Lilligrim. You're still up? You should get some rest. I'll keep guard and make sure the fire doesn't go out. <laughs> Don't look so grim. Your thirst for action is honorable, but the mysterious traveler is right. Strength lies in tranquility. Lilligrim felt like screaming at the brave Sir Drogalot. She hadn't traveled all the way to Goblin Gorge just to sleep, but something kept her from losing her temper. Fuming, she turned away from her companion. Her eyes fell on the quiet traveler who had listened to the entire conversation. Was that a smile she saw beneath the hood? Uh, uh, uh. 
<sighs> Are you as tired as I am? Well, well. Is that the legendary army of Hoth Mortigal? A little girl with braids? Fabulous. Oh. Why so angry, little girl? You're not here to declare war, are you? It would almost make a pleasant distraction, putting your feet up and drinking tea all the time. In the long run, it's not good for my goblin army. But why should I sound the horn for battle? My scouts told me about your lazy companions. You can't possibly think you can defeat my army with those dopes. I hardly think so. As long as we are not being attacked, I'll stick to the advice of this friendly traveler. Wait and see, and drink tea. <gasps> Lilligrim was boiling with rage. She was very close to throwing a tantrum, but something was holding her back. King, and now you're furious because there's not going to be a battle. Aren't you happy that I found a peaceful alternative to fighting? Uh-uh. Yeah, but what are you going to do about it? I've already got your friends wrapped around my little finger. And as long as everyone stays calm, that's how it's going to stay. Just face it, I've got it all under control. And as you know, throwing a temper tantrum is just bad behavior. So be a good little barbarian warrioress and take a nap. Good! The ball was stuck, but the pressure in the cauldron still wasn't enough for something to happen. You try to plug the valve with a log that's way too big. Roll for dexterity. Mm, no. You try putting the logs on the fire. Roll for sneak and hide so Sadragalot doesn't wake up. Done! The logs were in the fire. The child, what are you doing? This noise can't possibly be good for the group harmony. Without wanting to rush you, maybe now is the time for controlled, well-considered action. If you proceed with the required calm, I'm sure you'll be able to defuse the situation before there's a disaster. Uh-uh. I really must insist. You stop making that sound. Can't you see that you're threatening to destroy the idyllic calm? But that's... To arms! They've declared war on us! Sound the horn! That sound. I have to keep calm. <sighs> Enough. I can't take it anymore. This noise is driving me crazy. I'm losing control. To arms. Oh. 
finally the fun part of the role-playing game began. The group stormed the battlefield with no restraint. They were led by Lilygrim, who furiously swung her berserker sword in circles. And as the dice rolled in the institution, so did the heads of goblins in Hoth Modigor. It seems it is a good idea to occasionally vent your rage. It was a short battle. The goblins were powerless against the fury unleashed by the group. The plans of the Goblin King were thwarted. Lilligrim found the defeated monarch cowering beneath one of the support beams of the dam. Lily, poor foolish Lily, that was a terrible mistake. Lilligrim was still wondering what he meant when she heard an ominous crack above her. When the pink floods had subsided, our heroes were faced with an incredible sight, the Valley of Unpleasant Memories. Will you look at that? I have to admit, I'm really blown away. We shouldn't be here. Ha! <laughs> You've always been quite the comedian, Snipples. No, I mean it. This valley is cursed. I heard that. Wait a second. Lily? What's wrong with her? I'm sure you can imagine how she felt at that moment. You can't? Oh well. Who knows what really goes on in the mind of a little girl. You feel all right, little girl? <coughs> little girl? Hello? Mm, uh, are you okay? I was worried, you know? Am I crazy, or did it just get colder in here? What a shame. Lily just didn't have the skills. It's so depressing. I'm supposed to award experience points to improve a talent. Expressive dance, making music, lock picking. I don't actually want to be able to do any of those things. Isn't there a talent such as accepting one's fate or assigning experience points without experiencing an existential crisis? Peter's dithering made Lily furious. Couldn't the notorious whiner make even the most basic decisions? Lily would have liked to smack him across the face, but something held her back. 
back. Ouch. <sighs> You're right. I'll just increase pick locks, and that's it. There. Why don't you just hold on to the character sheet? I don't want anything to do with it anymore. firmly locked. It sounded crazy, but she now actually had the skill to pick locks. Done. The gate was open. She wondered if... It was true. She'd opened the real gate during her trance. The path to the asylum's tower was now free. Somewhere in the dark uncertainty, there she would find her friend. Without really thinking about it, Lily took the stuffed rabbit with her. If she was going to enter Dr. Marcel's realm, she didn't want to do it alone, like she usually did. Lily was certain. This had to be the cell that Edna was being held in. The door was firmly locked. Please don't disturb. Well, Lily was an expert at that. She could stand on the sidelines for hours without anyone noticing her. The phantom looked depressed, but Lily noticed something else. A key ring. Was that the key to Edna's cell? This bowling ball had a creepy expression, but not creepier than the little boys in the picture in the hallway. How awkward. Lily had destroyed the termite farm. No. Hanging up the portrait of the ugly boy there would certainly be spooky, but something was missing. The clothes rack reminded Lily of the old man from the school. Did that really happen today? On top of the clothes rack, the bowling ball looked like a skull. But something was missing. Lily shuddered. Suddenly, there was a ghost in the storeroom. What's that? A ghost? Hey, listen here. If anybody's gonna do any haunting here, it's me. Beat it. If you see Alfred, <laughs> tell him to haunt round this way sometime. I never got to say goodbye to him. Somebody had left their lunchbox. That would never happen to Lily. She didn't have a lunchbox. Huh? 
Noteworthy. The termites scarfed all the pancakes and ate a hole through the door in the process. What's that? A ghost? Hey, listen here. If anyone's gonna be haunting around here, then... Wait, wait a minute. Alfred? It's Alfred! It's really you. I... I can't believe it. Oh, Alfred. I never got to say goodbye. <laughs> and I have so much I still want to tell you. Where to begin? Oh, yeah. I know. You lousy, dirty toad! Because of you, I've lived my whole life in a stinking sewer. Just you wait. Lily! Oh, thank goodness. We were so worried that they had gotten you, too. The doctor has completely lost his mind. He wants to turn us all into mindless puppets. Just look at what he's done to Mother Superior. Oh, hello, Lily. Nice to see you. But what are you doing here in the middle of the night? Did the other students make you do this? They are such naughty children. You, on the other hand, were always so good. So good. I'm sorry that I was always so strict with you. But now, thanks to Dr. Marcel, I'm a good child too. Come, Lily. Sit down. You can help me embroider the dolls for the doctor. Just ignore her. Please concentrate on finding a way to get us out of here. We have to split before the doctor... Uh-oh. <laughs> I finally caught you. I was hoping you'd show up here. I can use all the help I can get to speed up production of my hypnosis dolls. Soon, I'll be delivering them across the entire world. And then, naughty children will become the stuff of fairy tales. Once I've subjected you to my improved hypnotherapy, Nothing can stop me. <laughs> the upholstery was torn. What had happened here? It appeared that Mother Superior was under the influence of Dr. Marcel's hypnosis. That means she wouldn't be much help. Lily caught herself wishing the old, strict Mother Superior was back. Lily hesitated. Usually she waited until Mother Superior was gone before she rummaged through the garbage. But Lily was running out of options. But what was that? Were they... Eyes? Perfect. Lily now had a needle and thread. Lily had an idea. She knew she couldn't sew very well, but maybe it was good enough to give Harvey back his old eyes. However, something was missing to implement this plan. Lily had an idea. She knew she couldn't sew very well, but maybe it was good enough to give Harvey back his old eyes. She made her first stitch. Lily hesitated. She'd often been told that she wasn't very good with the needle and thread. But what did she have to lose? She was just going to have to chance it. What are you doing? Stop that. You're hurting me. You must not use sharp objects. You have 
you have to. Have to scratch my fuzzy butt. <laughs> I'm back! <laughs> I can hardly believe it! I'm my old self! <laughs> Harvey? Is it really you? <laughs> and there's... there's Edna! Come on! Go, go, go! Let's set fire to something! And fly to the moon! Just so we can eat it up! Go for it, Billy! What are you waiting for? Let's tear this joint apart! Yippee! You have to get us free, Lily. I think Mother Superior has a knife to cut the threads. Unfortunately, she can't use it while she's hypnotized. Could Lily help Mother Superior overcome her mental blocks this way? Shaking, she pulled the string. Here too. Cool. What's that? Some kind of fight? Less talking, more fighting.
You won! Yippee! No, it can't be, you damn rabbit. You were supposed to make sure she would stick to the rules. She can't just do whatever she wants. Of course. Riot! But we need rules. Otherwise... Otherwise... Mother Superior's behavioral blocks had been removed. Had Lily made a mistake? Was Mother Superior once again as strict and vindictive as before? But even as Lily thought about such things, Mother Superior started weeping uncontrollably. <gasps> Thank you, Lily. I'd completely forgotten what it's like to be a child. All the unfair rules. <laughs> All the restrictions. <laughs> oh, Lily. What have I done to you all? Bravo, Lily. Now we have her where we want her. Take the knife from her so you can finally cut us loose. that cute. Do you think I could hold it? Mm. But, 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 Lily, what are you up to? Do you really want to give me to Mother Superior? I mean, she could do with a bit of pizzazz in her life, from the looks of it. But I thought the two of us are friends. We could try so many things. Come on, let's light a few things on fire. Or talk with Edna. Or build something crazy out of different stuff. Or, or... Do you really want to give me the Mother Superior? Uh-huh. Really? Really? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, Lily. <laughs> How can I ever make this up to you? I'm sure you want something to make up for it. Don't you? <coughs> Unfortunately, this knife is all I have. Do you think it would be enough? Uh-huh. Wonderful. Oh, thanks for everything, Lily. Well done. If you carry on like this, I can imagine hiring you as a deputy someday. Or I could hire you as a cosmonaut's assistant, which is even cooler than a deputy. Whatever. Just please, cut us loose, fast. Then we'll figure it out. I've already come up with a plan. I'm sure you know the story of the girl who ran away from Dr. Marcel's asylum long ago? The same girl that pushed him down the stairs that same night? Well, I never told you this, but that girl was me. What a surprise. Yeah. And that's why I know my way around here so well. Behind the cushion over there is the famous ventilation shaft that I used for my escape back then. We'll be free in no time at all. We'll have to get past Dr. Marcel's office first, but, um... Lily? Is something wrong? Come on, Lily. Cut us loose. Uh-uh. What's going on? You're not going to do something stupid, are you? Lily, where are you going? Lily! Lily! Are you sure that's what you want to do? <laughs> Excellent. I knew right away that you're dangerous. The other children, those were accidents. But now, you're here with a sharp knife, ready to kill a helpless old man. You might feel well, but the truth is, you're sick. Very sick. You need my help. You don't believe me, do you? You think 
You're doing all this for Edna's sake. Oh, Lily. There's something you should know about your friend. She doesn't exist. There was a girl called Edna once. You probably once heard about her. But the girl that you know is nothing more than a figment of your imagination. An attempt to escape your friendless life at the convent. You think I'm lying, right? Because there's someone else who can also see Edna. Let me guess. A priest, perhaps? No. A policeman. Right? The manifestation of a higher authority. When you thought that Edna was in danger, your subconscious invented him too, to legitimize defying Mother Superior's rules and helping your friend. Just ask her yourself. They're here. They're a part of you, Lily. Oh, Lily, I'm sorry. The doctor's right, Lily. You're just imagining us. Now put the knife away. The game is over. Wonderful. <laughs> Finally, you see the truth. All the reasons that brought you here in the middle of the night, armed with a knife. None of them were real. Now put the knife on the desk. I'll hypnotize you immediately. Only my therapy can heal you. Unfortunately, he's right, Lily. Don't do it. Put the knife away, Lily. Be a good girl, and do what you're told. Lily was close to tears. She had only just learned not to always do what she's told, and now it was supposed to be all wrong? While the others were talking to her, another voice kept getting louder. A voice that told her, Continue. Continue. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Put the knife away. Do what you're told. The others were right. Lily was apparently sick. She wasn't capable of deciding what was right or wrong. So she set the knife aside and began her therapy. Dr. Marcel had won. Maybe this wasn't the happy end you were expecting. But the moral of the story is, you must always do what you're told. Always. Without exception. The end. Are you sure that's what you want to do? <laughs> Excellent. I knew right away that you're dangerous. The other children, those were accidents. But now, you're here with a sharp knife, ready to kill a helpless old man. You might feel well, but the truth is, you're sick. Very sick. You need my help. You don't believe me, do you? You think you're doing all this for Edna's sake. Oh, Lily. There's something you should know about your friend. She doesn't exist. There was a girl called Edna once. You probably once heard about her. But the girl that you know is nothing more than a figment of your imagination. An attempt to escape your friendless life at the convent. You think I'm lying, right? Because there's someone else who can also see Edna. Let me guess. A priest, perhaps? No. A policeman, right? The manifestation of a higher authority. When you thought that Edna was in danger, your subconscious invented him, too, to legitimize defying Mother Superior's rules and helping your friend. Just ask her yourself. They're here. They're a part of you, Lily. Oh, Lily, I'm sorry. The doctor's right, Lily. You're just imagining us. Now put the knife away. The game is over. Wonderful. <laughs> Finally. You see the truth. All the reasons that brought you here in the middle of the night, 
armed with a knife. None of them were real. Now put the knife on the desk. I'll hypnotize you immediately. Only my therapy can heal you. Unfortunately, he's right, Lily. Don't do it. Put the knife away, Lily. Be a good girl and do what you're told. Lily was close to tears. She had only just learned not to always do what she's told. And now it was supposed to be all wrong? While the others were talking to her, another voice kept getting louder. A voice that told her, Continue. Continue. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Put the knife away. Do what you're told. Lily had no intention of undergoing therapy. She'd never felt so free before. She could decide for herself what was right and wrong. Slowly, she raised the knife. No. Lily! No! No! Maybe this wasn't the happy end you were expecting. But the moral of the story is... You can do whatever you want, as long as you keep your free will. Even if it means stabbing an old man in a wheelchair to death. The end. Are you sure that's what you want to do? <laughs> Excellent. I knew right away that you're dangerous. The other children, those were accidents. But now, you're here with a sharp knife, ready to kill a helpless old man. You might feel well, but the truth is, you're sick. Very sick. You need my help. You don't believe me, do you? You think you're doing all this for Edna's sake. Oh, Lily. There's something you should know about your friend. She doesn't exist. There was a girl called Edna once. You probably once heard about her. But the girl that you know is nothing more than a figment of your imagination. An attempt to escape your friendless life at the convent. You think I'm lying, right? Because there's someone else who can also see Edna. Let me guess. A priest, perhaps? No. A policeman, right? The manifestation of a higher authority. When you thought that Edna was in danger, your subconscious invented him, too, to legitimize defying Mother Superior's rules and helping your friend. Just ask her yourself. They're here. They're a part of you, Lily. Oh, Lily, I'm sorry. The doctor's right, Lily. You're just imagining us. Now put the knife away. The game is over. Wonderful. <laughs> Finally. You see the truth. All the reasons that brought you here in the middle of the night, armed with a knife. None of them were real. Now put the knife on the desk. I'll hypnotize you immediately. Only my therapy can heal you. Unfortunately, he's right, Lily. Don't do it. Put the knife away, Lily. Be a good girl and do what you're told. Lily was close to tears. She had only just learned not to always do what she's told. And now it was supposed to be all wrong? While the others were talking to her, another voice kept getting louder. A voice that told her, Continue. Continue. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Put the knife away. Do what you're told. Continue. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Put the knife away. Do what you're told. Stop. 
Continue. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Put the knife away. Do what you're told. Stop. Continue. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Put the knife away. Do what you're told. Stop! Shut up already! Very good, Lily. Let him have it. That goes for everyone! You've just been bossing me around this whole time! Lily, do this! Lily, do that! But get this! I'm not your lap dog! And you, Doc, if you want to hypnotize me, you'll have to learn how to walk first! Because that's what I'm gonna do now! Your therapy is garbage! Why don't you worry about yourself, Grandpa? Lily kept wailing until she was hoarse. Finally, exhausted yet relieved, she started heading back. For the first time in her life, she was doing what she herself thought was right. Maybe this wasn't the happy end you were expecting. But the moral of the story... And you shut up too! There's no moral here! Got it? The end! Seems like you need to be solaced Telling from the scratch on your knee You fell and got hurt in the process And now you come crying to me I catered for these circumstances And hands carry needle and stitch in my pants Don't worry my dear, there is nothing to fear, just a stitch and a sew, soon it's almost as new, and the cut will appear after all you have to admit it is not as severe. Scott, my dear I can't stand to watch children bleed Well, don't give me that kind of look now Just keep going on, soon you will See how everything will end well, though It still may depend on your skill I catered for these circumstances And hands carry needle and stitch in my pants But yet needle and thread can bear dangers instead If you're clumsy and plump and dull fingers and thumbs It might just turn out bad, especially when it comes To delicate operations like that I can't stand to watch children bleed I guess I should revise my statement The wound is not going to heal Forget about all that I said and 
work harder on your stitching skill I catered for these circumstances And hands carry needle and stitch in my pants Now you pay the bill for your lack of skill And please do stop crying and mourning and sighing Don't weep like a whelp that is painfully dying I merely was trying to help I can't stand to watch children bleed. Seems like you need to be solaced Telling from the scratch on your knee You fell and got hurt in the process And now you come crying to me I catered for these circumstances And hands carry needle and stitch in my pants Don't worry my dear, there is nothing to fear, just a stitch and a sew, soon it's almost as new, and the cut will adhere after all you have to admit it is not as severe. Stand to watch children bleed Well, don't give me that kind of look now Just keep going on, soon you will See how everything will end well, though It still may depend on your skill I catered for these circumstances And hands carry needles Stitch in my pants But yet needle and thread Can bear dangers instead If you're clumsy and plump And all fingers and thumbs It might just turn out bad Especially when it comes To delicate operations like that I can't stand to watch children bleed I guess I should revise my statement The wound is not going to heal Forget about all that I said and Work harder on your stitching skill I catered for these circumstances And hands carry needle and stitch in my pants Now you pay the bill for your lack of skill And please do stop crying and mourning and sighing Don't weep like a whelp that is painfully